Salamoana Exiles, we are here right now with Jonathan Rogers, the game director on Path of Exile 2 and a co-founder of Grinding Your Games, the genius studio behind Path of Exiles. Jonathan, how are you doing today, man? Oh, I'm all right. You know, it's been a pretty busy time for us, but um, I should finally be able to get a bit of a reprieve after all of the uh, crazy deadlines. Uh, as soon as we get this uh, launch that we we're just about to do out of the way, then we should be good. Yeah, definitely. The launch of POE 1, all this POE 2 mm -hmm. news coming out. It was splendid. Mm -hmm. And thank you so much for inviting all of us out there for Exile Meet. No it problem. was really cool to get hands-on with POE 2 and hopefully get a lot of good feedback your way. And that's something for that sure. I'm really curious about to start off the interview. Uh, sure, good we on. just got back from Exile Meet. What was the most positive piece of feedback that you had from all the content creators? Something that was you know, universally praised or just something that you kept hearing you know, from everybody you talked to? I mean, for me, the big one, I mean, so one thing people loved the bosses, like the bosses were a huge hit. Yeah. Um, that was like a thing that, uh, you know, like, and I'm, I'm really glad to hear that because, you know, like that's something that I really love about POE2. Right. The bosses are so much cooler from right from the get go um, uh, because, you know, they're like effectively, you know, the same designers who have been working on end game bosses for POE1 yeah. um, effectively now making bosses for the early game of POE2. So that means we get a chance to kind of have all of that uh, awesome stuff going on. Um, but also, um, you know, like just combat and WASD and that kind of stuff that like people tend to love that stuff um so um, i'm really glad to hear that as well that's um, awesome so, uh, yeah like that that's, that's been good okay very very cool uh what was the most surprising negative piece of feedback was there something that you didn't think would be taken poorly that was taken poorly in the end um so I think probably the stuff that's kind of been the most negative. So I guess there were three sort of big areas that were the most negative out of the event. Um, one of them was is the availability of support gems, which I definitely agree we should have done better. So what I think we're going to be doing is like pushing the support gems earlier. We're also going to be using more uncut support gems. Um, so uh, so un basically with an uncut support gem, you get to uh, choose which um, uh, which support gem you'd like. Right. And um, what we found was is that um, because they're random drops right now, and because you can't even choose which the ones you're getting usually, uh, yes. people just weren't tending to get the support gems that they need need for their build um so i think we're going to push that quite a lot earlier and i'm thinking like maybe even as soon as like maybe area four area five something like that i'm um, just push it a bit earlier on like get get that kind of going on oh that's um, awesome to hear yeah yeah so that that'd be a good one i think as well and um, the other one was is that um there was definitely concerns about flash charges um, okay curious it's very, it's very hard to know with that one because um uh it, so th this has been pretty consistent from people, so we definitely have to do something about it. Um, but um, the 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 concern there has just been that um, the um, like. I think it's especially the case for POE one players. It's like you're effectively yeah. people just get used to the fact they never have to go back to town, they never really have to worry about yeah. all that sort of stuff, and then so they're yeah. immediately like, okay, like yeah, I don't have to worry about this. And um, my hope was that with like a fresh start in like the beginning of the game, that this wouldn't really be an issue, but it certainly right. seemed to have been an issue for certain people. So yeah. um, I think that it's something that um, I'll need that we're going to readdress. I don't know exactly what we're going to do about it. I was actually just talking okay. to Mark about it um, yeah. a couple of hours ago, um, and uh, I think that. Um, yeah, I, th I think there's something that has to happen. So there's been some suggestions from other community members and so on. I don't know if I'm 100% on board with those suggestions exactly. Okay. Like we're sort of in discussion about like, you know, should we be changing things more substantially? Like, I, I don't know, we'll, we'll work it out. But, um, you know, like th there's definitely been a few comments around that. So that's been another con a consistent thing. And then the other thing right. as well that, um, that, that really sucked, honestly, and this was really not intentional, but did happen is that certain people just fell into balance holes of like, uh, you know, like... Uh, that they don't find good items like right. basically the minimum the minimum i guess is not high enough if you know what i mean like the maximum i think was definitely there there were people who just like got some like you know two-hander and they're just yes. like away and laughing al kaiser the minimum, i think <laughs> yeah uh, the minimum i think was was not high enough and um we're, we're discussing like ways to change that and i think that one of the um one, one of the important things we need to do because i mean like the first thing a lot of people will suggest when we're like oh people aren't finding the stuff for their build or whatever is they'll be like oh you should have some kind of smart drops where you like have like things based on your build or whatever and i'm just like not a fan of that at all yeah um so what i think the right solution is is to um have more quest rewards and have more um things that come from quests right i think that's a great idea yeah, yeah. So effectively, I think as well, like giving some gold that you can go shopping with uh, from quest as quest rewards um, will help because then you can just choose what it is that you want um, uh, to, to be able to improve your build. So um, right. I think that um, that will be something that can improve like the minimum quite a lot, but also just like more places. Like we were actually discussing as well, like um, in terms of number of skill gems you get is probably too low at the start. I don't think we necessarily have too low number of choices, right. but I do think the number of gem picks you get is too low, like the, the drop rate of, of uncuts. 
Right. Um, so we're talking about maybe having it. So like, for example, carrying Crone could maybe drop an extra uncut, like a few other things like that. Like just like just like coming out, coming up with like some more more, more places where that can happen, just so you get more skills earlier. Yeah. Um, because I think the other problem as well is that you can have a very highly variant um, uh, uh, experience depending on what skills you happen to pick. Um, so like if you're a warrior, for example, I think that picking uh, bone shatter is really key. Um, yes. and, uh, that's, that's super important. It's like one of your main combos is like getting damage out for declaring like packs and so on. So, um, things like that are Huge super boon. important. And I think so gi giving people more choices and so on, um, uh, like not necessarily more like things to choose from, but more ability to choose things. Exactly. Um, was, was sort of important as well. So I guess that's probably the main stuff I learned from the event. Okay. Well, that's um, great. Uh, but I mean, it can be, um, that I I'd, I'd say those are the ones where if we fixed those I think that would be coming along going a long way to improving what people's experiences were. I mean there are obviously still like bugs and crashes and random yeah like yeah that, and so on. That's, that's obviously that makes issue, sense though. Yeah. In terms of like the overall like things where we got the design wrong, I think those are the main concerns for me. But I'm curious to hear if you have any other uh, feelings about any of that. Uh, I I was very <laughs> I had an interesting experience. Obviously I played the warrior and I was one of those people yeah, yeah. that fell into a hole. Right. I didn't get any items for the warrior. I, I got a rare short bow that dropped, but I couldn't right, really right. use that, you know, so I fell into that yeah. hole and I did have some stoppers, but I still right. had a great time. What I'm curious right. to see, though, people that are playing PoE2 for the first time, right? Will they experience that far more? I know you've been doing a lot of first user testing and you yeah, said yeah. the difficulty wasn't an issue. It was just, you know, odd things that they found that you were like, oh, my gosh, I couldn't believe this. Like your right. wife, you said, right, didn't right. realize when she was on low life. So you added the little uh, red outline and everything. Right. That's so fascinating. I'm wondering if you just make use of Evan a little bit more, you know, maybe add some more tutorials in with shopping, mm -hmm. with quest rewards, pushing people to those optional bosses the first right. time. I feel like so that was great. We definitely we're definitely doing more of that tutorial stuff. So as yeah. you mentioned, um, yeah, like um, we've been uh, doing like videos for the skills. We didn't manage yes. to get all of them done for the, yeah. uh, for the for the for the um, for the test we we're doing, unfortunately, yeah. um, because Evan was a little bit busy busy editing trailers and the live stream and like all that other stuff that he normally understand uh, taking care of. But yeah, the plan is to have um, videos for a lot more stuff um, and uh, tutorials for for lot. So for example, like support gems as well. Um, having each of really? them a little video to explain how they work and like you know skills and so on. Like I really like that sort of stuff. There's actually been some controversy around it because um, some players uh, in the office have actually been kind of like, um, as soon as someone's talking to me in a game, they kind of feel like it breaks them out of the experience a little bit. Um, okay. So like that's been the concern around that stuff. But I actually think it is important because um, people, um, like generally speaking, like when uh, like I, I can explain to you how a skill like Bone Shadow works in like five seconds if I'm telling you in person. Yeah. Yep. But if I like do the sort of, like as soon as you write something down in text, everyone starts to get very concerned about like uh, exact technical accuracy and like all of the stuff around exactly, you know, and, and then yep. as soon as that happens, it's like you start getting like a book being written yep. for, uh, yes. each, for each skill. Um, yeah. And so uh, that's the the trouble with with the text version. It's like, and it starts to bloat out and then you start to, as soon as you see that giant skill pop up, you're like, my eyes are glazing over. Like, I don't even, you know, I don't know what I'm reading. So on, and I'm just kind of not getting it. Yeah. So as the videos with a, with a, with a, uh, a, a an explanation like by a person, I think, can explain something really quickly in a, in a way. You are hitting it right on the money. I mean, what do people do if they don't understand something in PoE? They log out of the I game and they yeah. Google it yeah. or they look it up on yeah, YouTube, yeah. you know, go to a Ziz uh, PoE University video or something like that. If you put it in the game, that's just a win for PoE. People will not log out of the game. They'll stay inside, learn it in game. And you're right. If it's a video form where you're just saying, hey, here's what Bone Shatter does and it's yeah. not text, you know, it's evergreen too. So it's yeah. less upkeep unless you change how bone shatter fundamentally works. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> Sorry. That, that is the concern that we then change stuff and then the video. Exactly. Changes, and you, hopefully remember to do that. Um, but we need to make sure that they we need to make sure they're more discoverable. And I think the UI around them could be a little bit better as well. There's a few things like that that we can improve. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, I think just, um, but the, the other, the other concern there, as I was just saying is like, uh, uh, what what do, what do I pick? Um, like we don't really want to be going. We don't want to be explaining that because I think that's important. But um, right now um, we do have some issues where I think that yeah, depending on what you pick, it really can um, it really can change your experience in a negative way. So we just need to make sure that we're really making sure that uh, all of those skills are in the right places. That yep. we're like you know like yeah, just and, and also giving people more picks will mean that they have less chances to miss the skills that are really important um, for a given build. So, right. Um, I'm hoping that we can improve that part of it as well. Yeah. That completely sensible and you talked a little bit about itemization and pushing people on the right paths and 
something about items that some people noticed in this exile meet playtest mm -hmm. was that certain unidentified items had tears appended to the end of Correct. the base type. Yes. Could you maybe dial into the design a little yeah, bit on that? Um, it's funny. It's funny because I wasn't actually planning on announcing this, but then obviously it was in the game and uh, like right. the, the, it happened. So I guess I might as well talk about it. So oh, effectively, fantastic. this is part of our new. Uh, this is part of our new way that uh, magic, uh, like that, that magic items uh, and and above drop. So effectively, I've talked before about what we need to do is some way to increase the um, the the value of items okay. without necessarily having to uh, make it so that every single item is a rare, or every single item is a magic, or every single item is is, is a is a white. Yeah. Right? Or without having to just ten times the number of drops and be able to get you know like 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 just more items spam on the ground. So effectively, what we've done is we've made it so that um, uh, unidentified so. The, internally the system works quite differently i don't want to talk too much about exactly how that goes on but what i will okay. tell you is that those tiers what they represent is that is an item where when you identify it you're going to get higher rolls of the mods and hell yeah and stuff that's going on awesome so effectively what that means is that if you identify like a t2 uh, over a t1 you should expect like a much better much better outcome for that identification um and then um it goes all the way up to tier five for um uh for for uh, those uh, things as well and um there's other stuff going on kind of behind the scenes uh that is related to this but not like as player evident like to do with like how currency drops and so on like like internally there's like a tear roll that happens beforehand and it's like if you roll like tier like tier five and then it's currency then that means that it's going to pick like you know higher tier currency to be uh -huh. in that slot and there's things like that going on so effectively yeah. we've got a, it's, it's a way that we can um more uh uh, more uniformly improve the value of drops without having to just resort to spam of right. drops or um, other things going on. So like there, yeah, that's that's kind of what's going on there. But so you saw a little bit of evidence of that. Um, it won't necessarily. There usually won't be too many um, higher tier things happening at low levels. But what it means is that as if you do get um, um, higher levels of um, of, of um, magic, magic find or whatever source, um, they'll, they'll lead yeah. higher tiers so you can get that stuff going on. Yeah. Does it work just on magic and rare items or will unique items also have tier five drops so where they roll unique, really high? Unique, unique items will be placed into the tiers, but they don't, because it doesn't like matter like what, uh, like you don't need to know that after it drops. So therefore it doesn't okay. say. So the reason why the unindeed ones have to say a tier is because obviously that influences the result of what, like for trading purposes, right? You need to know like an unindeed item, like what, uh, like how valuable the drop exactly. Yep. T0 you know versus I mean? T4 yeah. or something. Yeah, 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 yeah sure. Whereas, it, whereas a unique is just a unique, right? Like yeah. it's going to be the same. So like while we're going to sort the uniques into tiers and use the tiering system, um, that doesn't have to be evident exactly to the player. It's just that, you know, like some of the rarer ones are put in higher tiers and then the higher the yeah. tier you are, the more likely you are to get the rarest one, et cetera, et cetera. That's super exciting. One more follow-up on this. Does this mean sure. that now in Path of Exile 2, tier one won't be the most powerful like mod or role it'll be like tier five oh, on right, items right, right. Yeah. so that is so actually i don't know that we were actually so th currently in the client it just says like tier one or whatever like that yeah. um but that's kind of really more of an internal thing i think what it we're is... actually going to do is have like an icon there to indicate like the and then there'll be like higher and higher icons or something. oh they will okay we got bother it. doing it yet so um, okay. that actually has was a concern that people listed by the way like internally even is the fact that like the t the tiers are backwards and it's like yeah right um honestly like i wouldn't look too hard at the exact okay i had to ask like, that's just, got that's it just a thing. But yeah uh i think that the players tend to prefer that t1 means the best rather than the um rather than the worst but yep. then i think it would be weird to go from like an untiered rare to like a t5 rare so yeah. like that was why it was kind of done that way so i think some kind of icon would improve uh, yeah. the situation but yeah that's effectively um what's what's going on with that 100 percent Okay. Mm -hmm. One other thing that I wanted to bring up about my experience from exile meet before we mm -hmm. move into some other questions is the pushiness mechanic. Now, this is right. something that obviously was implemented in PUE2. And as a warrior who was constantly up front in melee, mm -hmm. especially during boss fights, I found myself, if I didn't block a melee attack, even if it was just like an auto attack from the boss, I would just be pushed around constantly right. and I'd get interrupted and everything. So I was kind of curious, is that design intentional? Should I be pushed constantly, even if it's just an auto attack and not a huge swing well, or something like that? I'm talking about a, Draven in particular, yeah, that yeah. guy. So this is a, this is a, tr this is a tricky one. Okay. Um, so, uh, I think it's important that you don't intersect with monsters. I think that's ultra important okay. so that you don't get like a bad um, feel from combat. And it's something yeah. that I think that, um, POE one doesn't do very well in this regard. Mm. Um, so, um, that's important. Yep. Um, I also think that even POE2 isn't doing a good enough job of this now. And in fact, if you look at footage of like the Devourer, you'll see a lot of cases where the boss is sort of intersecting you and like it's not really, doesn't really feel quite right. And even things like, I think um, Carrion Crone, um, okay. she, uh, she's she got like a thing where she uh, you, you heavy stun her and she walks back. 
And then she walks forward again as part of her um, uh, as a, of a heavy stun. And that walk forward doesn't have pushiness enabled. And so um, you just stay where you are and get intersected. And right. I really hate seeing the character just in the middle of a boss. Like it just makes all the, the, the characters not really feel very real to me. Like yes. I, so I, I kind of hate that stuff. Okay. On the other hand, I do understand that like um, there are, um, it, if you're getting pushed around too much, it can feel bad. Now the thing is, is that pushing doesn't technically interrupt your actions. Um, what it prevents is so you can't be moving while you're being pushed but it doesn't interrupt yeah. the move so that means if you're dodge rolling and then you like get pushed a little bit then your character will get pushed a bit but then as soon as the push ends then your character just continues rolling yes um there are a couple of bugs around that by the way where like <laughs> sometimes right now like uh it can like weirdly just multiply the like distance that you go you and like, get, like pushed across the across the room yes yes um, that happened so to me a few times bug. Yep. Yes, there is that bug as well, which is not intentional, by the way. That was okay, like okay. A, that, yeah, that's a that's a weird bug that's happening. Yeah. Um, uh, to, something to do with the nonlinear movement that um, bosses have. But then the other thing as well is that I guess just part of this whole cloud of thought here um, is that um, uh, bosses in general have a lot more movement going on with them with their attacks than they did before. Yeah, and then also the player has a lot more movement going on as well, and it's kind of hard to reconcile that. So I think that there's quite a lot that like needs to. Like, there's more that needs to be done here for sure, but I will say that it is important that the bosses have the ability to push you and that um, we avoid having the situation where you yeah. just feel like you're intersecting them. Like, yep. I really want to improve that. Um, so um, if you don't like the feeling of getting pushed, that probably means that we need to do a little bit better there. I know that Mark has said to me before that um, we need to be, like, it's actually getting... So, okay, fu funnily enough, the pushing... The, 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 okay about draven in particular yep is okay that we we added the pushing to draven's attacks literally the night before um <laughs> the, uh, the, the, the that, that demo build because i was like saying to mark um oh man like we forgot to add all the pushiness to draven so like then we just like rushed it to like get a bit of a bit of that and so it probably wasn't as refined as some of the other bosses were um i would say um yeah. so uh, that is one issue it's, it's funny. funny how like <laughs> that, that one is but um that one uh yeah that one it's possible that we that, that we that we overdid it a little bit. I'm I'm not certain. I honestly have to go back and try it again. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, as I said, I think it is important to have pushing. I think it's uh, very important that you don't intersect with the monsters. Um, I think we have to make sure that that feels good every time it happens. And there's also a couple of bugs with it that we do need to fix. Okay. But I yeah. do think it is very important to have um yeah some kind of pushing going on just to prevent uh, okay. all the intersection stuff that I think make the combat not feel as good. Yeah, that makes sense. And hey, I I'll be honest, that was my first real experience with a really difficult boss fight, like a Souls like. Right, right. I played Elder ring for the first time yesterday because i got my butt handed to me in the right, demo right, right. i was like i need to try out some of these games in preparation right, right, right. uh and it's such a different feeling so it may have just been me unfamiliar with that style of play <laughs> you know because I, I really just play poe one and that doesn't happen at all in poe one like right, you said right. um so okay very interesting and cool to hear um let's move on a little bit from exile me with one thing that was announced during the live stream and uh, it's been it's been a little uh, a little heated discussion around it, and that's Path of Exile 2's delayed closed beta. Now, I think the decision is perfectly sensible. Your reasoning behind it is great. If you found a better game within the game you were making, we want to make that game before we release it. Mm -hmm. yeah. However, I'm very curious, and a lot of people are curious too. An alpha will be occurring mm -hmm. in June. Now, is that going to be an NDA alpha? Is that going to be yes. something that it will be an NDA alpha? NDA, NDA. So effectively, um, the people who are going to be inviting to that, um, like the intention here is to get the kind of people who we believe are going to be really good at testing. Um, like, okay, getting a um, getting a boss fight actually good is like such a huge amount of um, stuff. And the later they get in the game as well, because we want to have natural testing with like real, real, real played characters. Yes. The later we get in the game, the harder it's going to be to actually get proper feedback because you have to play all the way yeah. uh, through and like there's lots of different character classes and so on we have to do. So like it's a whole, it's going to be like a huge amount of work um so we definitely need like a reasonable number of alpha testers but at the same time i don't want to be um spoiling the whole game um uh, to, to the to the to the world uh yeah you know so i don't i, I really i really do want to do an nda alpha for that um, okay but it became clear during the um because like you know we only made the decision to do the big delay like um it was a, bit, a little bit more than a month ago it was probably okay. like maybe maybe six weeks ago maybe a month right. or six weeks ago something like that okay and um the, the reason why we did that really was because when we saw like what it was taking to get like, you know, cause we, we, we had this, uh, the, you know, this meetup that we were doing where we had all the streamers and so on. We knew we were going to have that. And then getting it to the point where it was even like, you know, like getting it, 
we underestimated the time it would take to get everything to the point that we would need it to get it to just for that. And the amount of like playtesting, like real playtesting you have to do, like you can, you can do all you like with cheats and learn nothing, honestly. Like all you really learn when you're doing it with cheats is um, like whether or not it's technically functional. Yeah. But in terms of like the feel of the bosses and, over, and all that sort of stuff, like even just the AI, like it's, it's sort of surprising the degree to which like you can't really understand what good AI for a boss is like until you actually play it with legit characters like that are not cheated because you just don't quite yeah. get the feel. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, there's lots of stuff around that that just needed um, to happen. And we realized like, as yeah. we were, you know, going for this deadline, which, um, you know, was, was brutal, honestly, like, um, you know, like I, our studio does not normally have crunch as bad as that. Like that was, oh, really? that was oh. bad. Yeah, no, but seriously, I, I feel really bad because like um, to get to that deadline was like, was brutal. Yeah. Um, uh, like to, we realized like as we were coming up to that like yeah okay this isn't this isn't this isn't going to work um mm -hmm. we uh, we have to we have to have more time um uh but we just need to make sure that um like but the thing is like the actual content will be there right like as far as like the schedule like everything's scheduled about you know when are the areas going to be ready when are the right. boss models going to be made? on and track and everything it's still it's still it's still fine it's just yeah. it's just that you know the it's the balance we underestimated the time to actually iterate on it and everything like that so an alpha makes a lot more sense where um you know we can do that iteration um we can don't have to be worried about like you know the reactions of all the community members you know because people yep. once they've played something you know they form a first impression i don't want to break that um with with, with, yeah. with a game that hasn't yet been optimized as much as we could do um, so yeah, we just have to make sure that we, we're getting there. So um, yeah, it's, it's really just that balance work that I think we underestimated. Like, yeah, uh, it, it takes a while and there's also few, few, not very many, you know, it's like, we've got like uh, more than a hundred people working on POE2, but yet there are certainly not more than a hundred people who can work on the balance of POE2, you know, yeah. I mean? like it's a small group ultimately who actually do the, the who actually do the balance. So um, yep. yeah. And it's a, it's a Titan. I mean, a game with, it's going to be 12 character classes. Everybody can use all the abilities of the other classes, yes, yes, the ascendancies. Hard. I mean, yeah. I, I can only imagine how complex it is on the back end it's, it's, of everything. It's quite insane. It's quite yeah. insane. Right. Uh, and then one more part to that question. Sure. Definitely. Beautiful new website, the path of exile 2.com <laughs> If you haven't seen it, don't bounce off the stream right now, but go check it out <laughs> after this. It's wonderful at the very bottom. It's not a closed beta this year anymore. It's early oh, access. Yeah. Is that any yeah, yeah. change? Is that? Uh, no, no. So the reason why it says that is literally because there was like some marketing guys working on the website and they're like, oh, we think early access sounds better to, <laughs> okay, to people okay. than, than closed beta. And like, it's more yeah. modern sounding. I'm not sure. Whatever, guys. I guess so. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> um, it's just, I guess it's just more modern lingo. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. I was just curious if it was going to be you know, open to literally anyone who just wants to hop in. It's early access. Same, okay. Same stuff we were going to do before. We just, same stuff. We okay. just got to rename just because, you know, marketing people. They yeah, have yeah. Totally understand. Okay. <laughs> well, awesome. Okay. That was it about that. Now, you say that Pee 2 is, it's massive. It's got a lot of features coming into it. You know, we sure. saw one new one, the blocking with the warrior. That was really cool. Mm -hmm. Another one that you just revealed is that mm -hmm. there will be mounts in Pee 2 in the form of gems. Now, can you just yeah. explain how you came to this decision? I I, I want to hear it. I'm sure a lot of people do too as well. I mean, it really isn't it isn't more complicated than just we thought it would be cool. <laughs> like you know, we're like I don't know what to tell you, right? We're like, um, it, it happened after we um had, were doing the um the moving while shooting on the ranger. Okay. And um. Oh, we, so it was pretty um, recent then. Oh yeah, recent, recent for sure. <laughs> um, so yeah, it was during during the moving while shooting with the ranger, and we were just like, hey, it would be really cool if there was a way um to move at full speed. And then we're like, you know, some I don't know where it even came from. I can't even remember. But someone probably just jokingly said, oh, you could ride a row or something like that. And I'm like, well, you know, that's cool. And so why not, right? Let's give it a go. Yeah. Um, and um, you know, it, it's fun. And the, the funny thing about it is that um, you don't actually technically move faster at all. It doesn't make you move faster when you're just riding okay. around. Yeah. You move at your regular speed, but what it does do is remove the penalty for shooting while moving. So Got you it. effectively. And you feel like you're motoring when you're uh, when 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 you're using it. It looks like it. I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it's just funny how uh, like that. That all you have to do is just not have the penalty for um for moving while shooting, and you yeah. and, and it happens like that. So um, yeah, it's um probably too op right now, uh, <laughs> quite frankly. Um, yeah. But uh, it does have the downside, which we didn't really show. Um, of uh, where when, when you uh, just like when you're blocking, you have like a the the um stun threshold. Yep. The stagger bar. Yeah. Yep. 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 And then, um, and then, uh, when that, um, when that gets to the top, um, you fall off and that's a brutal stun as well. It's the longest heavy stun, um, that the player can have. Okay. Um, I think it might be like three and a half, four seconds, something like that. It's like, it's quite long. Um, okay. and so, um, you have to be very careful when you're, um, rower riding. Um, and of yes. course, like if you're about to lose, um, uh, you know, if you're about to get stunned, then you can jump off and, uh, okay. then, uh the animation to get back on takes a bit of time. So it's not something you're going to generally be doing, um, like, uh, in the middle of like a, fighting you know it's the kind of thing like after you finish the pack you can get back on your get back on your row 
right and the roa gem at least it, it, it's a gem right so any yeah, yeah, class can so use this you know, effectively it's just a minion right like it's yeah. just a minion that you have it just goes adds into your minions and then uh but yeah it's one that you can click on to start writing now of um, course the mtx possibilities are endless here are you also consider sorry this is not the first thing we were thinking about okay no um, that, but i have to say it because oh my gosh i just know i'm gonna well, scoop I up stuff realize because they're the first reaction of course in twitch chat was like oh yeah 60 dollar mounts or whatever it's like, you know, <laughs> 100 uh, so i should have realized that that's what people would be saying yeah right? so. i mean well if you design them well too i mean what i thought yeah. was you guys saw mounts in other games and arpgs where you could just ride them and they're like what could we do like well, a little it, better it was, not the first thought. it was honestly not really like that i mean that's i know crazy. like I, I guess there's the inevitable comparison of like oh you know d4 added mounts or whatever yeah. that honestly wasn't what i was thinking about we yeah. just thought you know like it would be cool like you know it's part of the just you know, like, hey, what if you could ride a rower? Someone said it, and I'm like, yes, it would be cool if you could ride a rower. Shoot. What if we actually implemented that? What would yeah. it actually take? And we actually went through, like, quite a few different discussions about that. Because, like, just the animation for it is yeah. so complicated. It is so complicated to make that work. Um, like, And it, it's it's honestly held together with string and glue. Uh, so I, can, I can picture you in the door of the animator's offices saying, hey, so we just had this idea. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was one of them that even that even suggested it as a joke. And then I'm like, nah, but actually, though. <laughs> Time to get to work, guys. And they're, and they're like, what have we signed ourselves up for here? Um, right. You know, we were talking about, uh, you know, then we started talking about, like, should it be like GTA controls? Should it be like, you know, like we, uh, we went through a whole lot of different uh, discussion. But no, the uh, at the end of the day, it's just the same as WASD. You can just move around and shoot. Very cool. And um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, 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 pre it's pretty fun. It's pretty fun. And are there any other Mount Gems planned, or is it just the rower I mean, right I'm now? Not gonna, I'm not going to promise anything, but once okay. you've opened Pandora's box, you know, uh, there's uh, things okay. pop out, and then, you know, you, I'm sure we'll want to do some other stuff, too. Fantastic. I mean, with uh, 600 monsters in Pee-wee 2, like, 600 yeah, plus. Yeah. I mean, you like, told me at Exile Meet, in Acts 1 and 2, there's over 200 monsters, like, unique monsters. Yeah, yeah, I believe it's around there, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah very yeah. cool. So. I mean, it's, it's, it's like, it, it, it's funny how... Yeah, I, it's like you wouldn't think you would need this many, but then what happened was is that we just kind of, as we designed each area, yeah. we're like, oh, well, we need some unique monsters for here, we need some unique monsters for there, and pretty soon you just end up with like vast numbers of them. So yeah, yeah, it yeah. ends up that way. Exactly. Okay. Well, recent announcements going the, going away. Uh, now, mm -hmm. there was one that didn't happen that was yes. planned, and I think, you know, a certain yes. Gazzy was probably very excited about it. Yes, yes. The Witch. Yes, the witch. Uh, what's going on with the witch? Was there a stall in progress? Did you guys like change so the mechanics? I, or? I thought we were close yeah. um, on the witch. Okay. I really believed it. And I foolishly said uh, that uh, we were going to be uh, announcing the witch um, sooner than then when we actually get And the problem was that, um, uh, yeah, it just, it, it wasn't as fun as I had hoped uh, what okay. we were doing. And so I, we needed to, we needed to do better. And a lot of the issue, honestly, came down to visual clarity. Like, because the expectation with a minion character is yeah. that you're going to have like, you know, 20 plus minions. Right. Um, you know, like, like, and that, that's what people want. And um, getting visual clarity uh, in combat to know when to use abilities, to know when to do this and the other thing, like and like like and like understanding like what's going on with bosses and so and so on is yeah. really hard with so many entities that you're controlling. Um, so I just wasn't quite happy with how it was, and um, so what we decided to do is kind of go back a little bit, like yeah. um, decided we'll just like you know take a step back, right. make sure that we're on the right path. Um, you know we're gonna do more experimentation and make sure we can come up with stuff. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, I just wasn't quite happy with it. Okay. Um, now I think that we will probably still end up with something pretty similar to what I was originally envisaging. Um, it's just that um, the uh, and and look, I certainly don't want to compromise. Like, so just just in case people are worried about this, I don't want to compromise on the number of minions you have. I do think it's important that if you're playing a, a POE minion character, that you have like lots and lots of minions. Um, but we just have to find ways of making sure that the visual clarity is there to make sure people understand what to do to make you feel like you're actually participating in combat and all that sort of stuff. And I just, as I said, I just didn't think we were quite there. So um, yeah. Uh, I, sh I would hope that we can get um, to a witch announcement soon, but I'm not going to promise anything this time because yeah. hopefully I've learned my lesson from uh, from the last one. Um, but uh, yeah, like, um, uh, yeah, just more needs to be done effectively. Yeah, great. Well, going back to the drawing boards is fine as long as you guys want to perfect everything. It makes total sense. Right, right. What we've seen of like the mercenary and everything, you know, uh, the time is uh, is is good. You know, right. you guys are cooking <laughs> over there. I think a lot of people are okay right. with that. Uh, all right, so into it, it's almost uh, integrating Path of Exile 1 a little bit, and I, I want to keep it focused mm -hmm. on Path of Exile 2, um, but mm -hmm. I'm curious. So a lot is changing from PUE 1 mm -hmm. to PUE 2, and you see a lot of imperfections with that game. You know, mm -hmm. essentially Path of Exile 2, obviously you want to be superior. Right, right. 
Was there anything in Path of Exile 1 that you're porting to PUE 2 that you just see as perfect? Like, we, we designed this perfectly on the first go about. Uh, we can just port it to PUE 2. It's totally fine. Or is there nothing right now? It's just lots of improvements honestly, that you're seeing. It's honestly hard to identify those because the yeah. way that PUE 2 has been made oh. to that game effectively. You know what I mean? Like, because that's how we ended up. So because of that fact, it's like PUE, like every if we don't change something then it is how it was from poe1 you know what i mean like technically in that game client if you've got cheats on you can just warp to poe1 areas and they're just still there right we haven't actually even removed them yet oh really um you know like <laughs> <laughs> like you could just take a poe2 character with all the stuff that's got going on and just fight a poe1 boss if you want and um the reason why we didn't remove them yet is uh, i mean other than the fact that it would take work and isn't really you know something we can just do at the end it's actually kind of handy sometimes to just go be able to go back and have a look at some people like all the poe1 items are still on the game client you can still create them with cheats and everything like that like everything from poe1 is still there Ah. Um, and then uh, you can actually it's actually really handy to be able to compare them and so on like do do things like that like the comparative testing yeah um but um aside from anything else it's like what that means effectively is that the base of poe one is always what we're building from and so yeah. by default everything we don't change is just how poe one did it right and um so it's, it becomes hard then to identify like this is the perfect thing because you know it's like well anything we didn't touch that's the stuff that we consider to be fine from poe one um yeah. and um okay. you know, like that that um you know the, 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 there's a huge amount that's just there, just all the stuff we've ever done before on POE one that um you know that, that just yeah it just it won't get touched and won't get changed because we were happy with it. Curious. Um, yeah. but at the same time, we're also not afraid of going and just like ripping something out and changing it. So uh, you know like that that that's fine too. We see. But, um, yeah. yeah it's, it's it's kind of interesting because um I think maybe people um. I, I honestly don't know what other studios do when it comes to making a sequel, like whether or not they literally like, you know, fresh, like yeah. new projects to start from completely from scratch or whether they just take the original project and then more morph it into their new one. But uh, either way, like probably just due to the way development on POE 2 happened where it started out as a, um, as, as, a, as an expansion to POE 1, you know, with the whole two campaign thing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, this is where we kind of are with the, um, the game client and, um, uh, you know, that, that, so that's kind of how, how it is for us. I've always been curious, when did that decision happen to split it out? Because the last time you showed PoE 2 before ExileCon 2023 was mm -hmm. 2021 during the Ultimatum reveal. How soon after that did he realize, oh my gosh, um, we got to split right, it so out? So you're talking about when we showed off the uh, the Ranger and Crossbows, I believe, yes, right? Yes, that is correct. Uh, yep. yeah, 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 yeah. So it was, how, how long would it have been? So I think it's probably been about two and a half years, I think, okay. um, since we did that. Yeah. And it really came from more and more uh stuff where we wanted to make changes and people were like oh we can't change this because it'll break all the stuff about poe1 and i was kind of like well sure but like we should be caring like like often we get feedback of like oh this would break this build from poe1 and i'm like right we really should be worried about exact builds from poe1 because there'll be like a million new builds to play you know what i mean like exactly. those are the ones we should be worried worrying about you know what i mean so yeah. if we feel any pressure about you know how poe1 builds were this is kind of an issue and so that's when we came up with the with the thinking of like well maybe we need to in order to sort of drop like even within in the design team of like this idea of like being beholden to what peer we want exactly did um you know we, we the splitting that up will mean that everyone feels much more fearless when it comes to actually making the changes the, like the really core system changes that we felt that like we needed to make right um so yeah it was as i said it was about um probably about two and a half years ago um and uh yeah it was just a variety of changes we were making around that time that um uh, that, that, that led to that really right and i was honestly flabbergasted at how different poe2 felt from poe1 right you know i i blast poe1 i get 40 out of 40 right. i play it a lot when I sat yeah. down to play PUE 2 and I got my ass handed to me by the bloated Miller, I was I was shook. I mean, you walked by right as I killed him uh, for the right, first right. time, but the, the entire game just felt so different. And I really liked it. Um, and All I'm right. really curious to see if it maintains that same sort of flow that I felt and lots of other players felt as they were playing through Acts 1 and 2. Is that the goal? That it kind of stays at that speed um, until you get to endgame and of course make a god tier character because that'll happen. You, it's an ARPG, right? Yeah. So You definitely need to feel like you're getting more powerful. Like yeah. that is important. You should not feel like you're just as weak in Act 5 as you were in Act 1. Like that yeah. should definitely, definitely think. But at the same time, um, I do want to try and make sure that the challenge does keep up. So in as far as like, um, I mean, I, ge I, I guess what um, my feeling is, is like you saw... Um, uh how the, you know the ranger demo we did 
Um, I don't think that's too far off. It started to show um, uh, okay. more supports, but the, even still, it wasn't the number of supports you would have if you were actually in Act 5, so mm -hmm. it should be even more than that. Yeah. But at the same time, like as I said, I do want to make sure that um, yeah, you still want to use multiple skills. You still want to, to respond to what the boss is doing. You still want to have um, interesting combinations with your character, with what you're doing, and still have that maintain um, uh, through the whole campaign. Right. And ideally, at the very least, towards the um, through the start of Endgame. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm, look, there will come a point, of course, where you get to the point where you're just like i'm a complete god yes it yes. happens but uh the the the, the I, I i do want to make sure we postpone that a little bit and actually it's funny because um right now that is actually starting to happen um with legit progression uh, in the middle of act two um and i don't actually quite know why that is yet okay. i still like looking to this. this this has become clear from the testing we've been doing recently that um it goes a little bit too exponential towards the middle of act two i think there were maybe a couple of players in the test there that kind of managed to get that yeah um and um, there's something going on um, with uh, the combination of, uh, of monster life and the way stunning works and a few other details that's kind of making that a little bit too um, a little bit too much. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, like we'll, we'll see what's going on. But the thing is, is that I know that um, uh, the the um, you still need to feel that progression, and that is super yeah. important. So that's just the main guiding star. Is like, right. do I feel like I'm more powerful in Act Two than I was in Act One? Do I feel like I'm more powerful in Act Three than I was in Act Two, et cetera? Et cetera. That has to still be the case. Yes. Um, so as long as we can maintain that feeling that you've got that character progression, um, you know, that you're like meeting the fantasy that you have of your character where you're like, you know, like, I'm, I'm like, you know, as, as I said in the, in the side of thing, you know, you want to feel like Legolas if you're a bow character, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you want to feel like you're bounding around the place and like, you know, shooting everything. Like that's the thing you want. So you need to get, to get more and more of that feeling as you go through. So that, that's really what we're trying to achieve. Definitely. And uh, I know you mentioned uh, Endgame a little bit in a former interview and how you think a, a map, for example, in PB2 should be 33% league mechanic, 33% oh, yeah. the packs, and 33% the boss. In PB1, right. it's like 160th is the boss, the other, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're just sure. blasting. Is that still the design goal? Because honestly, that, that excites me a ton, right. knowing yeah, yeah. that, that the boss fight will be interesting, you know, every time I go yeah, into yeah. a map. For sure, for sure. Um, I mean, and ultimately, the um, the bosses that we're um, that we'll be using are based on the bosses that we're having from the campaign, um, at least to start with, right? Like the like the, the ver just the very first, just like you know, base base edition, if you will, of, of the map system in Poe Two. Like the base maps will um, the yeah, the bosses will be the bosses from campaign um, with 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 adjustment yes. um, and, uh, and some 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 changes. Um, and okay. so the um, that 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 means just the base level of, of map boss you're going to get in maps is just going to be much more interesting. Ooh, okay. Hey, we're going to preview ahead to a question. I had later down the line since we're talking about bosses and maps. So right now in PoE 1, most of the map bosses are just higher damage, higher HP, maybe in a little bit different arena. Are there sure. other changes planned for map bosses in PoE 2? Are you trying to do something different with the design, maybe some surprises, or is it going to be that same sort of philosophy since they're already <laughs> so complex? They, they, they... They won't need to, ideally, they won't need to change that much, but it is okay. nice when you can have the mechanics be like, okay, so first of all, they definitely need to get an AI and a balance pass for sure, right? There's a lot okay. that goes on there, but yeah. that can actually change the feeling of a boss quite a lot, especially if you've got things like maybe there was a phase that happened once in the campaign one, but you have it happen multiple times in the, in the, uh, you know, oh, the I know boss, exactly like what you're referencing. Things like, you know, like things like minion ad phases, like you do them a little bit differently and like things like this, there's stuff like you, that you can do. So I think that, um, uh, but it ultimately comes down to feel and Mark really is the expert here. Um, like he's just excellent at taking a boss fight like that knowing what it needs uh, to have to feel like it's mechanically interesting enough um in uh, at endgame um so uh yeah he uh he, he'll like there might be some bosses where we're like it can just go straight in and it's not a problem right like that that might happen but i think a lot of them will you know definitely have tweaks and so on that needs to happen to make them actually feel really good at endgame oh very curious okay and then mm -hmm. i know you probably haven't designed a lot of this yet but we've seen all these bosses we saw the act boss for the first time the iron count mm -hmm. that's an awesome yeah, fight yeah. And I know you said that that's kind of what a lot of the bosses onward will be like at that level. Right. Hey, pinnacle bosses in Pee 2, are they going to be like uh, Lost Ark level raid bosses with all those crazy <laughs> mechanics going on? What, what are you guys thinking for that? Um, honestly, like it's going to be, it, it's, it's going to be hard to top some of the act bosses. Honestly, like, it's really hard to, uh, uh, to, to, to go even more extreme, but they have to be right. Like they have to be extreme. Um, we have to make sure that they've got, you know, like lots of interesting phases, lots of different mechanics and so on. Um, yeah. Like, I mean, they're, they're just going to have to be, they're okay. just going to have to be awesome. Um, yeah, like there's still a lot of work to do design for the, for the pinnacle, um, with the, with the, with the beta, yeah. Um, we likely won't have the like pinnacle bosses yeah. for the, mm -hmm. the, at the start of it. Um, there will be pinnacle bosses in the sense that, um, we'll have things like, you know, like 
I mean, I don't want to promise anything too specific, but it's like there will definitely be stuff that is at the end of the the beta's end game, if you know what I mean. But yeah, um, the in terms of like the actual like end game storyline type bosses, which is like what you see in um in, you know the various expansions to end game we've done in PoE one, um that's more likely to happen at release uh for uh, for PoE two rather right. than uh, rather than the start of the beta. Yep. Um, but uh, yeah, like we obviously have to make sure that it feels like the like 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 ex- more extreme than what you've previously played. So uh, yeah. yeah, I'm sure there'll be. A lot of crazy stuff there. I know that uh, we've got concepts already. Uh, oh no! Of, don't and, tease and us, man. So there's, there's oh. all that stuff going on. So uh, because you, you know you have to start it pretty early to get uh, everything uh, going on. So I know there's stuff in concept um, for that. Um, I think there might even be some stuff starting to get modeled and so on for the pinnacles. Oh, um, that's so cool, dude! Whatever. Awesome to hear that you guys are thinking so far <laughs> ahead and <laughs> on concepts. I have mm-hmm. to touch on this. I really want mm-hmm. to. Lumerius or Lumerius, the mm-hmm. dude who's on all the promo art now for PoE. Right, right, right. Uh, I have to ask, is he a giant? Like, is that hooded figure uh, like a little statue or is that a person sized uh, uh, individual oh, right. on a, the uh, weapon? The, 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 the hooded figure on, he's, he's not, that, that is not, um, that is not the hooded one. It's on not. There. Okay. That is, that, is a, that is a statue of the hooded little one. Little statue. I, mean, I was like, oh my God, this guy's huge. He's a, he's a, he's a big dude, but he's not an actual giant. No. Right. Okay. Okay. I had to ask because, <laughs> um, wow, uh, that, that yeah, scale yeah. would have been... <laughs> Right, right. Huge. Okay. <laughs> oh, but there's going to be some pretty big scale bosses. Don't get don't get me wrong. There, there's uh, yeah. some big, there's some big stuff. Yeah, we've seen the giant uh, Kurog or K- Kutog oh, in yeah, Act there's, Four. There's I mean, there's, there's, there are much bigger bosses than Kurog. Oh, oh, there's <laughs> much bigger bosses than him. Oh my God. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, that's exciting stuff. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Uh, so we're gonna go back all the way to 2019, Jonathan, mm-hmm. and talk a little bit about some ascendancies, if that's okay. Yeah, yeah. And whether or not sure. they're still uh, still happening or not. So back in mm-hmm. 2019, uh, Pee Wee Two Ascendancies were planned to be rife with character altering abilities like cat yeah. form, melee bows, mm-hmm. maybe dual wielding shields. Yeah, Has yeah. that design evolved over the past five years at all, or is I it mean, still trying to do the same thing? There's certainly a lot more stuff that we have to do, but at the same time, yeah. like um, it is very important to us that Ascendancies feel like they do more as far as altering your character than Path of Exile 1 Ascendancies did. Okay. Um, so we want to make sure that they've got a lot more going on. And so th- those ideas um, were abs- are absolutely still ideas that, we are, um, that we're that we keen on. Um, I don't know whether or not like literally every single one of those is going to necessarily make it in, yeah. but at the same time, like I do want the real, like the Ascendancies to really alter your, um, how your character feels to play and like give you interesting interesting abilities that um you know that 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 change up what you might do okay so uh, yeah absolutely with that that's the design philosophy but oh. um yeah we 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 walked back a little bit on uh announcing them again because uh okay. we really found that like um we needed to be more certain about the core of each class and, like getting that that base feeling correct before we can really talk about the ascendancies again so okay um we ended up kind of um like just kind of feeling like maybe we shouldn't be talking about ascendancies right now until we until we until we've got all of the um the 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 actual main classes like mechanics announced and then we can talk more about ascendancies. Okay. Um. So uh, yeah, that that was the re- the reason we just sort of stopped really talking about them. But absolutely, that is still the plan to have the you know the really crazy character ordering stuff. Okay, that's that's really cool. Uh, are they still going to be similar to PUE one ascendancies where you can use one ascendancy for something that you guys totally didn't intend, or are they going to be a little bit more pointed? Given that PUE two has twelve characters classes there's going to be 36 right. ascendancies and there are archetypes in the game now um, there really the are so it's really important to us that the ascendancies don't just have like here is what you're doing if you're this ascendancy like we definitely right. prefer that um like while there is a theme and an obvious way to use the ascendancy there are also non-obvious yeah. ways to use the ascendancy as well like and like we don't want to technically restrict any of the abilities in ascendancy to be like no you have to use this with maces or something like that we want it to be like yeah. you know yeah. uh the the, the it, it they're open-ended it's just that when you read them like if you're a new player and you read them you're like this is obviously the mace ascendancy you know what i mean but then when you actually but then when you actually uh look a bit closer you're like well actually nothing in here technically says anything about maces it's okay. just that it's very much it's just the themed you know the names of yes. the nodes like the pictures the icons all that sort of stuff really make you feel that way yeah but then when you actually read the what the mods do it's like well technically i could find a way to use this in some completely other different way exactly and um we, we always like that kind of philosophy because we really Wait. look at ourselves as you know kind of like magic the gathering or something like that where it's like we give you a bunch of interesting tools people find interesting ways to um uh, to to use or perhaps abuse those tools uh yeah. for their to, to do something interesting with so um yeah we we try to keep things open as much as we can um with that stuff phenomenal to hear i, I know a lot of people from Pee Wee one especially are going to be great uh, really glad to hear right. that so right. very cool uh so you did say you were walking back talking about ascendancies a bit in the media kit 
there were some ascendancy names. So maybe yes, I'll yes. maybe I'll stray away <laughs> from asking about those. Maybe a more general yeah. question. Oh no, it's fine. It's oh. it's honestly fine because I mean, yeah, oh, okay. so th 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 there were some names given away there, but um, yeah. which I probably shouldn't have been done. But it is in the media kit, so it is fine to talk about. You know. Okay, like, so I'm I'm, I'm um, very curious. Arcane yes. so, Archer. I mean, the, the reason, the, re <laughs> the reason, so one thing I would say though, is that we reserve the right to change those names later, but the mistake 100%. there was just the fact that the file names, no one, the person who put them in there just didn't consider the fact the file names gave away, uh, yeah. <laughs> gave away names. Right, um, right. But ultimately what we've got there is we have the themes for most of the ascendancy classes worked out. Oh, cool. Um, we have a lot of ideas about what we want to do, like the core kind of elements yeah. about, you know, what kind of, what it would mean. Um, but, um, we don't have like specific nodes and there's more stuff that we, yeah. that we want to do there before we lock it in. Right. Um, but, uh, yeah, like, uh, effectively um, i'm not going to talk any more about exactly what those are okay that's fine but effectively yes the those names are public names now because we put them in the media kit so you can see them there yeah um and uh the reason we put those in is because we just thought that those um the art for those um just make good uh, good things in a media kit for uh you know like putting as backgrounds and it's other, true they, they do look beautiful and man that excites yeah. me like nothing else because if, if <laughs> poe can get that fantasy right, right, right. oh i mean like dnd &D fifth edition Arcane Archer right, right. was so bad, man. But oh, if right, right. PoE can get something in that vein, oh, that'd be so right. cool. Very exciting. Um, and keeping it general still, which classes ascendancies are you most excited for? Is there any one in particular that you're just like, oh my gosh, I'm I'm in the design on that one. This is exciting. Like, oh, the mercenary or this druid one. Um, there's one in particular for the sorceress that um, okay. I don't think we've fully explored how broken it will be, but okay. we've had some pretty good ideas and. Uh, okay. Yeah, I won't say anything about what okay. it actually is, but uh, there is okay. one for the sorceress that I'm uh, that I'm pretty keen for. Um, but yeah, like we 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 designed a bunch of interesting ideas for it, and I'm like, yeah. well, this sounds cool, and then we'll actually see when we implement them whether or not it's too broken or anything. But uh, you know, it's, it's pretty they're pretty interesting. Um, so, yeah. yeah, sorry to tease you like that. But... Oh, it's totally fine. People love it, man. People love it. Right. So, uh, great to hear. Now, uh, uh, not an ascendancy question, but a class question. I'm curious, mm -hmm. so we've seen a lot of the different mis or matches for the classes, right? We've seen mm -hmm. like the duelist and the monk and the witch mm -hmm. and the sorceress. Uh, one that a lot of people have questions about are the, is the marauder and the warrior. Mm -hmm. Like they mm -hmm. seem very similar. Is there any real thematic differences that you're going for there, whether it's in terms of the character or maybe the the aesthetic because right now the warriors like right, right. big slams so maces the, the, stuff like that yeah so the so the so the the real difference um yeah. comes down to speed um okay. like the 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 warrior is supposed to be the slower tankier you know like that kind of that kind of thing whereas the um the warrior is um, i mean not, not to you know we haven't talked about it but just to uh, effectively imagine the more sort of berserker like really fast uh kind yeah. of you know d different different vibe entirely okay so um yeah that's the i won't talk more about it because we obviously haven't announced it but effectively okay. it really is the fast versus slow yeah. um as far as that kind of th thing goes so yeah yeah that's very kind of cool thing. yeah in the poe2 uh trailer three there's a moment with the marauder and he throws right. an axe and it does this huge little spin. Right, right, right. Oh, so I'm very excited yeah, to see what that, you guys but, have cooking uh, there. Yeah, we, we, we'll do like a proper reveal of that yeah. before too long. Um, but uh, awesome. yeah, that'll be, that'll be good to see. Do you guys plan on doing those cinematic trailers like you did for the Ranger for all the classes? Because that was pretty good. I really liked it. Um, we'll have to see about that. Um, okay. They do take a bit of time to, to make. Yeah. Um, it's you know, it's one of those things that I'm sure that um, marketing people would be very keen of us on us if we can do, but uh, yeah. um, hopefully uh, the, the problem is, is yeah, they take quite a lot of um, effort from our animation team and so on. So, uh, you know, it's one of those things we have to worry about sacrificing development right. time in order to make that kind of thing. Um, yeah. So, uh, you know, we've got, we've got to be a little bit careful with it, but um, okay. yeah, I, I do want to do more of them. Um, awesome. So yeah. To, for what it's worth, yeah, it was phen phenomenal. Really enjoyed watching it. Uh, okay, so we're going to dive into... W I have one trade question for you, Jonathan. Sure. Uh, and you revealed to... I think it was Ziz that, you know, we're going to mm -hmm. have instant buyout trading in Path of mm -hmm. Exile 2. Uh, one thing that wasn't confirmed during that interview was whether or not instant buyout trading will still work while the seller is offline. Uh, yeah, it will. It'll it work. will? Okay. Yes, it will. Awesome. That was a very cut and dry question. I just wanted confirmation. There are lots of people who were like, yeah. we need to we need to double check to see if this works because yeah, yeah. No, that's going to mean a lot for, you know, end of league trading and everything. Right. So that's very for cool. Sure. Okay. Awesome. How do you think that this is going to affect the economy? This this whole trading innovation here. Yep. Have you had any more time to mull over it? Because we have lots to be, of people we have are to be, excited. We have to be ultra careful. Okay. Um, and uh really this is where why why the beta is going to be very very important uh for, for that um 
yeah, like I, I am worried about it for sure. Like I could, it could go horribly wrong, in which case we'll have to like do some other changes. Yeah. Um, but I'm hoping that it goes well. Um, it's very hard to test something like this. You can do as many simulations as you want, but ultimately um, it comes down to the actual reality of having a lot of players. Yeah. So I think it's going to be very hard to answer the question of how that goes um, until we um, do the beta. So right. what I suspect that we'll do, because it's typically better to um, start more stringent and then walk things, uh, make things easier if you can, I think we'll probably start with a fairly high, fairly high uh, costs associated with it, okay. um, just to make sure that um, we don't, uh, so that just we can see whether the economy gets destroyed <laughs> yeah. or not. Uh, and then if uh, everything's okay, then we can potentially walk those down a little bit um, and we'll sort of see where we get to. But effectively, we have to just make sure we're getting the balance of that just right. Um, there's a lot of very tricky considerations around this, but um, as I think I said in that other interview, um, I think that people just wouldn't tolerate anymore something that doesn't have some kind of instant buyout in it. Yeah. Um, so therefore, um, we have to make sure we're finding a solution to that. So um, yeah, that's uh, what we're going to try. And um, yeah. we have um, at least some of it implemented now. Um, oh, there's very more cool. That needs to ha that needs to happen. Um, but uh, we're you know we're getting uh, we're getting we're getting closer. Um, okay. and uh, we should be able to try that. I mean, but, but as I said, it's, it's, it's all like, even when we do the alpha, it will be almost worthless. The feedback from that particular element, because there just won't be enough players in the alpha to really yeah. know. Like, I feel like you need the sort of hundreds of thousands of players before yeah. you get to the point where an economy is really tested by uh, right. this kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's a very tricky one uh, for sure. But yes, I am concerned about it. Um, but okay. I do think um, that it is very important. Okay. Uh, along that same sort of vein, um, I'm, I'm curious. So, Another dev at GGG said that a lot of the company played Diablo 4 when it came out. And, you know, there mm -hmm. were lessons learned from that, of course, as you do with all mm -hmm. games. I'm curious, did anybody at GGG play Last Epoch when it launched? And did you of course. see any Comes cool, like, play. lessons or positives from the game when you guys played it? Um, I guess there are plenty, but I don't know that I want to go into any particular specifics okay. about it. But, yes, there's a lot to learn from, yeah. sure. I mean, like, they... I, I do think that they um, understand the genre well yeah. and um, things like that. So I think that, yeah, like that's a, there, there is a, there, there is a lot to learn for there from there for sure. Okay. Um, but um, you know, I, I guess that I, uh, when I've talked to people about this before, I've always said to them that um, the key thing is, is that when a new game comes out on your genre, yeah. the key thing you need to be looking at is what new bars have been raised and what's the minimum standard for gameplay that Very has smart. been set. So it isn't necessarily about uh, copying anything that they do, which right. I would really not want to do at all. Mm -hmm. um, but it is about like if you've got a certain experience from something in that game, and then um, you know, or like some some QOL or something like that. There are things like that that yeah. um, you know set standards, and you need you need to make sure that we're meeting whatever that new standard is as far as that goes, as far as those features are concerned. And then as long as we can do that, then I think we will have learned what we need to um, from uh, from that game. And um, as I said, like the trading, the trading stuff there was partly in response to that, right? Because they right. Um, had that stuff. People reacted really well to that. I could tell people were angry about how trade in POE one was. Um, so therefore, I'm like, we have to do something about this. We have to find a way to, um, you know, to, to to raise, to come up to that level. If that is the new minimum, we have to meet it. Um, awesome. So uh, that kind of thing is, you know, that is part of what's going on there. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Very cool, man. Uh, okay. So. Swapping over to another like Pee Wee One League question. So I've I've heard you talk so many times about Delve, Jonathan, mm -hmm. and how excited you are about mm -hmm. you know just maybe porting that to Pee Wee Two and how it's it's pretty easy. It's just you know the graphical overhaul, but the system, yeah, yeah. the bones are very good. I'm yeah, curious, yeah. is there any league that you're not looking forward to porting into Pee Wee Two that you think will eventually make it there, but you're like, oh, this needs a big rework. Like obviously. I don't think Harvest in its current form would ever make it to Pee Wee 2 with the design right, right. decisions there, but would you rework that in any way? Would, would you still try to port it with drastic reworks? Um, I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm kind of interested in it. I do like some of what was going on there. I actually yeah. liked it. Okay, as flawed as it was, I actually kind of liked the original way it was better than the way it is now. Um, uh -huh, like the, yeah. The, things, yeah, yeah, the yeah, management? Like I, was, I was more of a... Yes, I was more of a fan of that, um, yeah. but I mean, it's it's hard to say. But yes, there are certainly leagues that would be very hard to port just because they're like they they don't quite they they, they could do a lot better. I mean, it, it, there are even mm -hmm. some like um, leagues that um, even though they do work okay in PW one, there were still kind of things we thought we could do better, um, like more interesting settings or like we wanted to adapt them to a different setting than what we okay. had um, before. Oh, okay. um, and so uh, we've we've sort of changed how they work um, to do that. Um, I'm not going to go into any specifics about that, okay. but um, 
yeah that like there's a league that i think that is good in poe one i it could have come over but yet we thought that, that we, we had a call a place to do it and like a theme and we thought hey we could make some adjustments here um we could uh, we could change the way this works a little bit and we thought it, it's even cooler in the new oh, form is so. this the delirium like, hint that we heard about in act four i'm not going to talk about ah, that exactly okay now, but, okay i, I won't things go like that deep. i mean yeah sure um but um the other one i'm kind of interested in because i know that there are certain people who really love it is harvest um and um sorry not harvest sorry what am i talking about uh, uh what's it called um uh, the one with the uh, the tower defense one for the blight the called it blight. Uh, blight that's one blight, blight, blight. sorry i'm terrible with names by the oh, way like, no you're always, good dude um, yeah, yeah but uh blight um that's one that i know there are certain people who just love blight and then there are other people who just hate blight um and so um i'm kind of uh like uh, i feel like we need to do something at some point okay. um, but i don't know exactly what it's going to be it does need definitely some adjustment from how it is like yeah. there's something we can but i think there's something we can do there yeah um, okay so, uh, well, well that's we'll exciting see, to hear though. we need sister cassia in path of exile too her, her singing <laughs> well you is know just... we even we did actually come up with a place for her to be um oh! like in the, in the world design uh, oh cool <laughs> um but uh yeah the uh we need to actually see what we do oh but, that's uh, that's good to hear i'm glad mm -hmm. um so a little bit more about leagues and maybe leagues in pew too it's mm -hmm. clear that in pew one the design team has decided to insert a lot of borrowed power into each mm -hmm. league mechanic you know we had it with charms and tinctures and stuff in affliction mm -hmm. we had it with the crucible weapon passive trees in crucible is that a uh, part of design that you might pursue in PUE2 as to not immediately bloat out all the rewards? That's how some people see it, you know, that it's a lot of content, um, a lot of rewards. Yeah, I mean, it can definitely be good. Ultimately, you do yeah. need to have some feeling of like there's some new reward that I've got. There's some new thing that I can yeah. do um, in, a, in a league to make it feel like there's something interesting and new to do. Yeah. Um, so um, having that in a form where um, you don't necessarily have to keep it in the game in the same way can be good to prevent the kind of overall power creep of the whole game uh, but at the same time there does definitely need to be new rewards um that are permanent that like you mm -hmm. know, just make it feel like the game content is expanding so it's honestly really hard to say like i think okay. that what's going on with poe one is partly in response to the fact that we've had so many leagues and there's so much content um that you kind of need to find ways to do that without um making it too much more complicated yeah and i don't think that poe2 will have that problem for quite a long time um like right. i think it will be fine to add more content um to yeah. poe2 for going forward for quite a while um but honestly it's very hard to say what will happen like uh you know like part of that comes down to just when we're designing the league like you know what feels cool it's you know necessarily love that. <laughs> be a, an overall philosophy it can just be like you know what what hey here's a, here's an interesting idea we just do it um yeah. so uh, yeah i guess we'll see um how we end up there but ultimately I'm, i mean i'm fine with the idea we might do it we might not um on yeah. a per league basis look we may or may not even do it in future poe one leagues you know like it's just a it's, a, it's, it's honestly just comes down to what feels right for the league in question great Cool. A uh, question about party play, Jonathan. Yeah. So uh, what's the design intent behind it in PE2? Will everything scale to you and will support characters still have a place in the game? Um, um so as far as scaling goes, yeah. um, so we still have the thing where um the 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 monsters and especially bosses get tougher the more people are in the area we still have the thing from here we won where um if you come in which you can actually choose by the way um i don't know if, like if many people really think about this too much but yeah if you play together in a party in here we won then the higher level players scale down to the lower level players and mm -hmm. the damage and that system is still there we haven't modified it mm -hmm. um one thing we do have to be careful about though is that there's a lot more opportunity for synergy between uh characters in poe2 yes and that is because of the fact that um there's all these like state things like you know things like armor break and so on like you could have one character just armor break and one character just taking advantage of it um so what uh the concern there is is that is it like is the amount of life that a monster needs like a boss needs i should say more than 100 percent per player um because of that uh so mm -hmm. uh well there's going to definitely be some uh stuff to worry about there um i would say that we haven't been doing too much balance in this regard okay. currently like we've been noting issues but we haven't yeah. really been uh like resolving them so fast there's more to do um, but, uh, I think that, um, there, there's definitely going to have to be some consideration for the fact that two players playing together, if they've got a build that's designed to work with the other player, um, will be more successful. And we have to be able to make sure that we're taking that into account when it comes to, um, the, uh, the difficulty, uh, of the, of the bosses and so on. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, that, that's a, that's a tough one. And yeah, we've, we've got a bunch of work to do there. Can you combo skills together like uh, the poison cloud that we saw from the ranger? Mm -hmm. Can you shoot like an incendiary bolt into it yeah. using a crossbow yeah. and it'll explode? Yeah, of course. Oh, and of cool. course, you know, like, you know, like on the, on the, on the druid, we had the volcano. And if you're playing a warrior next to that, then it's going to be like crazy. Oh, like there's lots cool. of that stuff. And like, cause we're keywording way more things and having a lot more of those kind of interactions. It means that, yeah. um, 
like ideally all of the like so this is actually another one of those things is that when when we're, when we're designing these skills um we are where possible trying to make it so it isn't just like this skill is hard coded to work with that skill we are trying to make it more like you know like this keyword works you know like this keyword triggers the skill or that okay. keyword affects right. the skill. So right. like i believe that the we have like the detonating keyword or something like that which we haven't really like properly like put in there but that's like an idea of a of a skill that can detonate other things and then and do some kind of addition to it and then you know like things like that are what we try and do to make it so that you get the interesting synergy across um classes but also even just within a build that you do by having all of those keywords and by having stuff that works across classes it opens up for the people who like to design um builds um, you know, like the possibility for all that cross-class uh, interesting stuff. Yeah. So you know, maybe there will be a build that involves both um, the the so the archer um, poison set and the and the mercenary stuff going on. You know, right. like it can be that those things work well together. Um, but I mean, those are ultimately for the players to find out and, and okay, and, and right. Work out. And you know, we'll, we'll do some. We'll obviously try and make sure they're not too broken. But you know, yeah. like ideally, that like the interesting, really interesting stuff does get worked out by the players. Um, but as long yeah. as we make it as general as possible, we should be able to have uh, some interest there. Definitely. Now, I don't know if it's still his favorite play style, but uh, Mark really loved aura stackers in PewDiePie 1 for a while there. Do you think they're going to have a place in PewDiePie 2 or with spirits um, and the way that works? Is that kind of gone? believe that um so of course with spirit um the the investment you need to actually stack a lot of auras will be higher than it is in poe one so you mm. can do that mm. um but it's going to be like the character's going to be like if like okay you can like all in on spirit and then you can probably do some stuff with that but um, mm -hmm. yeah it's gonna it's gonna be definitely at the cost of some other stuff um yeah. so yeah it's probably possible i honestly it's hard for me to exactly say how that ends up but right. um yeah the uh effectively yes it should be easier for us to um, control the degree to which um, you have to sacrifice other stuff in order to be able to stack a huge number of ores. Okay, Due cool. How, yeah. Has Spirit uh, evolved in any way since we last heard about it? Are we using it for anything else besides auras uh, and minions? I mean, not really. I mean, no. it's ultimately just any kind of ongoing effect on your character okay. to use it for. So we, we're adding more and more um, skills that use it. Right. Um, so um, a cast I don't on crit, know if anyone stuff like that? Uh, yeah, of course. Right, there's all yep. the meta. There's all the meta gems. Yep. Um, but also things like, for example, um, on the warrior. I don't know if anyone really got to this or saw it in any of the footage that we saw. But there's like a, a spirit reservation that makes it so that it adds a um a parry window to your um to your shield, so mm. that if you block right before the attack, then it like does your shield like explodes, and that's like a spirit oh, reservation. Oh, I did. Yeah, I saw that a few times. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's like a thing that we had. Um, so there's stuff like that that you've got that. Right. Um, we can do as well. So yeah, just any kind of ongoing effect that just amps up your character as a skill uh, will will be a bit of spirit reservation. Oh. And ideally, we have um, enough of those that um, you feel like you've got some interesting choices when you get to right. that first spirit choice, uh, spirit reservation choice. Yeah. Um, which I think is in early act two. I think okay. currently um, is where that is, but maybe might move it around. I'm sure. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and. Uh, blocking that was very cool a very yeah. cool ad in uh in the mm -hmm. demo i'm curious is it going to be isolated to shields or maybe like if you do a wield swords could you parry will that open up a possibility uh, we will have to discuss more about that when we get to um, okay. to duelist i guess oh, um, no. <laughs> <laughs> there's like because that's a whole different other kettle of fish but um yeah, yeah that's uh, certainly certainly an area to think about okay great all right, we're gonna we're gonna talk about something a little spicy, Jonathan, uh, and sure. it's something I do agree with you on. Um, so I, I don't want to take the same point of discussion essentially that you've you've talked about many times over. Mm -hmm. I want to dive a little bit deeper. So mm -hmm. campaign replayability is a divisive topic, yep. but I respect your guys' stance on it. Mm -hmm. However, a lot of people would love further randomization to re increase the replayability of Pew 2s campaign. I right, know right. back in uh, 2019, you guys were planning to do individual character seeds for the world map. Yeah. Uh, so what how, actually, has that evolved in any way, the randomization so, of the campaign? So what we actually did for that in the yeah. end is we decided to make it so that instead of it being per character, we wanted to make it per um, uh, per league instead. League. Okay. And that's just because it um, makes more sense with regard to party play um, and so on to have that be the case. Yeah. And we're also just happier with that. We're also just happy with the idea that every time you play a new league, that's like the world re-randomizing. Yeah. Um, so that does work um, and you can, it actually is in the uh, in the build and, and can be tried. It's just that because of the fact that, um, you know, there was what you, you guys were playing one league, yeah. you only yeah. saw one layout of the, of the tree. Right. Uh, but yes, you know the world map that you saw in the video? That is a randomly generated uh, map. Um, that oh, is really? not a static image. Um, yeah, that's actually made using exactly the same tech as our random level generator. Um, and uh, that, so it's technically tile based and like made like just using all the same uh, stuff as a random level. And um, oh, then, wow. uh, and, and, and then 
uh, we can randomly relay out that thing. Um, and ideally, and, and the other thing as well is that people don't necessarily notice is that the direction of the exits on that map is the mm -hmm. same as the direction of the exits in the actual world areas as well. So the um, town so, uh, rebuilds yeah, every yeah, the league. Yeah, the, the exits of the town are based on which direction out of the town that the map generated. And so right. each league will feel quite different from that perspective. Now, I think that I'd be quite keen to also, um, we don't really have a lot of this right now, but I'm uh, keen to do more around actually rearranging zones even and quests and a few other things like that as well. I was curious um, We I was haven't ask really about done that. much with that. Um, in Act 4, we actually have a fair amount of that going on already, um, okay, but yeah, uh, in Act 1, we haven't really done a lot of a lot with that. Okay. Um, so I think that there's a lot of capability there to, um, that can make um, the uh, the campaign more interesting. But the other thing as well is that I think that even in POE 1, we didn't do enough to just modify the campaign over time. Mm -hmm. And I think that the time when that started was really when POE 2 development got started. We sort of stopped addressing the campaign as much anymore, and that's because all the people who work on the campaign were working on POE 2. Yeah. And so I think that we, that's probably part of the issue as well. And so um, we're actually trying to make an effort now more to like just modify the campaign just slightly with every release and do a little bit more with that. Yeah. And I think that in POE 2, we'll also be wanting to do the same thing where we're just modifying yeah. the campaign, adding more things to the random generation that we can do um, and just like fiddling around with it. And I also think that the overall, um, that the league layout randomization will also help. Um, so uh, yeah, that's uh, just one of those things that I think uh, can improve that a lot. Yeah, the um, map layout, the, the layout of mm -hmm. quests too, randomizing that, maybe bosses mm -hmm. and their mm -hmm. rewards, because now bosses, they give, some yes. give yes. very specific rewards. Yes. Uh, and we're actually too. planning on uh, making it so that those are different each league as well. So the, oh. the static quest rewards um, we uh, that, that, that the bosses drop, we want to rotate. Um, and that means okay. that um, what bonuses are available can change per league that can like, you know, change a little also, bit. Also, it's going to be like the Kirak map mods, you know, like, yeah, oh, yeah. what what <laughs> passive bonuses are we going to get yeah, in yeah, this yeah. league? So ah. we can do things like that. Like, there's a few interesting stuff. And I do think it's worthwhile doing that stuff um, just to make yeah. the campaign feel a little bit different each time. Like, just shake up the meta a little bit um, yeah. for uh, what, what we can do. Definitely. Uh, are we... Yeah. Are we going to get a big world map at the end once we finish out the campaign? Because I loved seeing the huge zone itself, you know, Act 1, seeing all that. Right. Will we be able to, like, zoom um, out or just flip through oh, the Oh, you mean a big, like, like, so we can see all across? Um, I mean, we have got a image of the world map um, that, uh, I mean, I, we probably should have something like that in the game client. Currently, I guess it's true that you don't actually see ray class just anywhere in the game client. No. Um, and we probably <laughs> should do that. Like, cool. um, I guess there's no reason why not. Like, uh, yeah, sure. I think we should probably do something like that. Oh. Um, awesome. That won't Ray, Ray class won't be random, of course. That'll be uh, you know like that that, yes. <laughs> that, that, that 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 is a fixed uh, thing. But um, that would be tough. Know, yeah, I think we should probably do something like that and show Very show cool. where the regions are. Just give you a bit of larger context on the world. I think that'd be probably pretty cool. Very cool. So one more thing on the campaign skip thing. Sure. Would you ever be open to the possibility of a partial? campaign skip some sort of shortcut you know oh you do this really hard quest chain and you go from act right. one to act three if you've already done the campaign like once this league or something like that right so, okay so you're talking within league because certainly with outside of a league i wouldn't want to do anything like yep. that yep um uh i mean look i'm i'm a bit i'm a bit dubious i have to say mm -hmm. one thing that will happen right now is that because gold exists and because shops exist, like your second character is going to probably be a pretty lot easier because you've just got like you've got gold from 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 in game. You've got um, the shops sell like the the new base types and everything. Like you with just the shop and gold, it should be a lot easier to get through the campaign on second attempt. Um, I mean, yeah, I I guess I guess I need to think about that one more. Like I mean, as it it's it's more reasonable within a league than it is outside of league. Like between leagues, I really don't want to ever do that. Um, yeah. But within a league, that is, it is more reasonable. But I, I, yeah, I, it's just yeah. not my favorite. Um, I, I'm sure it will come up again. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think you're right, too. I mean, you're going to be able to twink a ton of gear from your first character mm -hmm. to your second. And I think sure. a lot of those bosses, even though they were hella difficult, you know, me going through the first time, I think if I had, like, if I was decked out in unique, leveling uniques or rares or even magic items, that would tone down the difficulty quite a bit. Right. And it would feel but very similar. But also, you similar. just learn them. You just learn them, like you know how True. to how to deal with them. The second time you play it, it's going to be way easier. Yeah, um, just because you know that. You know I can't wait for that, Jonathan. I uh, I had yeah. a few dreams about playing Path of Exile too. After I was like, oh, I could have done this. Oh, why didn't I do that? Oh, I forgot about weapon swapping yeah. when I was playing. Right, so right. yeah, so I got I got to remember that stuff <laughs> next time I play. Right, so. right. Oh, good. Uh, so uh, an end game thing from Pee Wee One, I'm I'm hoping returns in Pee Wee Two, uh, and I'm curious mm -hmm. about your take on it. 
So Path of Exile 1 has a robust challenges system with many dedicated to overcoming right. every all of them, every single league, you know, the 40 out of 40 challenges mm -hmm. and the free cosmetic rewards. And you guys have been doing it all the way back since like, I think 2011, since your very yeah, first yeah. league, essentially. I'm curious, is that same style coming to PUE 2? Um, I don't I don't see any reason why it wouldn't uh, yeah. stay the same. Like, it right. seems like perfectly reasonable to have that. Um, and yeah, like, I mean, people like the challenges and so yeah. I don't see any reason why not. Awesome. Now... The big question, uh, mm -hmm. for the first few leagues of PoE 1, you guys mm -hmm. rewarded t-shirts to the first 50 or so people, I think, yeah, yeah. who uh, who completed the challenges. Would that be a possibility in PoE 2? I, mean, or... I, I, I really like that kind of thing. Me and too. Honestly, I don't, yeah, I, I love that kind of stuff. Like, I just love, like, doing wacky stuff like that. But um, I know that, like, I can't remember exactly why it was that it was stopped. Um, like, Chris would probably know that better. Um, okay. Because it probably just became annoying for various reasons, and then no one and then no one took care of it. But I, as it, I love that stuff. Like, if someone asked me, hey, should we do this? I'd be like, sure, of course we should do that, because that's the kind of thing I love doing. But, uh, yeah, I guess I would have to go and investigate what's uh, happened with that. But um, I, I'm sure if I asked Chris about it, he'd be like, oh, there was this problem and that problem and this problem. Okay, and I'm kind okay. of, you know, like that kind of stuff, I'm sure, is what yeah. would come up with, like, a reasons why. Yeah. But, um, yeah, as I said, I like quirky stuff. You know, like... I really liked back way back when how we did all sorts of quirky little competitions and stuff like that. Like um, we did a competition um, in the really early days of POE one, um, which was the level one DPS uh, competition. Interesting. Well, what we got people to do was um, I said, I, I said, to them, okay, we'll give someone a prize. I don't even remember what the prize was <laughs> for whoever um, comes up with the highest character screen DPS on a level one character. Um, and I thought that was just a really cool competition for people to think outside the box. And for uh -huh. some reason, we got like random backlash about it um, because people were like, what people realized was that they had to do is they had to kind of twink characters through the campaign to get the points, uh, the, the, the skill books and everything uh, oh. in order to get passive skill points uh, without actually having to level the character. And there was also stuff to do because like you have to not get experience, but you still have to be able to kill the bosses to get yeah. through some of the... Then there was like recipes you could use, to, um, you know, the recipe to like, um, uh, to, to, to oh, is there still a recipe to down level characters? I don't even know. Uh, I, still... yeah, I think there's a book Tome of Regret or something like that. Yeah, yeah, Maybe. I thought there's something like that. Anyway, anyway, there's something like that. I don't even remember. But anyway, the point Good was, attack. there was also some stuff you had to do. It was like a whole, like, like to me, what the competition was about was partly about understanding the, like, all the, all the crazy sort of little exploity things you'd have to do to get mm -hmm. a level one character to have all of the skill books. And yeah. then what skill is like got the most, um, the highest level DPS and what build you'd have to do and like all that sort of interesting stuff. And I thought it was really awesome. Yeah. And for some reason, players just reacted ultra negatively to it. They were like, mm. oh, you're forcing us to do all of this stuff that we don't even like. And blah, blah. like there was, was all this sort of stuff there. And I was kind of yeah. like, well, that's the game. You know what I mean? Like to me, that was the fun thing. And so I, right. I really like doing these kind of little quirky competitions and things like that. Um, but uh, yeah, there was kind of... I, I guess after that one, we kind of stopped doing stuff like that. Okay. Um, so, uh, you know, but I look, maybe i'll persuade someone to run another competition like that again yeah, um, but go. people the, the the community have to be in the right mindset for it this is not expected to be like some giant community event it's just like a, a cool thing for people who yeah. enjoy screwing around with like a uh, little you know just the, the the way the game works um, right a right bit. And i guys... think that my added go, go on go up go for it i was saying i think that my attitude to this kind of stuff like comes a little bit from like my early days of like kind of like trying to exploit game mechanics as much as possible you know like yes. i would kind of always be one of those people who really try to explore and yeah. like you know really trying to find out the weird ways to to abuse things mm -hmm. um and uh to me that's a fun thing to do so that's why i really liked uh those kinds of little competitions uh doing that doing that kind of stuff uh curious question on that in the exile meet demo what do you think was the craziest Expl if you want to go into it, the craziest well, exploiter the exploit, bug. The, 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 the worst bug was the fact that um, no one... Okay, so the crossbows just got some art. Like when we did the uh, Act 5 mercenary demo, yes. the crossbows uh, got like a temporary balance thing on them to make them work correctly for the zone. Like we didn't have time to like balance the whole, through the whole game. And then nobody remembered to disable oh, wow. um to disable it and so if you got a crossbow in that demo the damage was just absolutely obscene like uh the um the and, and i didn't realize it happened until we got some of the footage afterwards and i saw some guy was just like he wasn't even using any skills he just had like the shotgun crossbow <laughs> and was just like four shotting bosses 
like with the crossbow just like bang 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 and then oh he's dead god. and i was like oh my god this is this is terrible um and i felt really bad for that guy as well because he just like when he got that he just like went through the whole game doing that and i'm like we, i can't really let you show this um, oh, no. because uh, you know like it just makes all the bosses look completely trivial yeah um yeah. you know because uh which, which, which was very unfortunate but yeah um, so i felt bad for that guy oh, um, but yes crazy. that was the uh de definite uh issue that we had and um yeah the uh, the damage of that got reduced by 4x Ooh, um so after, after that uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, that mm -hmm. was a uh, that was a bit of a, an annoying one. Um, there's like a there was definitely a few other exploits in that demo of like um, bosses where they didn't have correct like there were certain places. I mean, we knew about some of these were like yeah. places in the arena you could stand where like the boss um, the AI just kind of didn't know how to attack you properly there and like right. things like right. that. You know, those are just like classic classic yeah. boss issues that you get uh, in, in in a game. But yeah, the crossbow one was definitely uh, de definitely the worst as far as like just you're immediately a god mm -hmm. uh, with, with a shotgun off the beach. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, that's very cool. I noticed mm -hmm. in the demo too, uh, I don't think I actually got it in my footage, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. uh, the passive skill tree had the uh, feature where if you hold it, held shift, it would Correct. showcase exactly what the nodes did Correct. to your character. Correct. That was really cool. Correct. Yeah, so the UI for it isn't really final yet, okay. um, but it does function. And um, right. like, there's a few things like there's some stuff we need to hide. There's some stuff we need to fiddle around okay. with. But yes, ultimately, um, I think that that system is going to be a really important one for making people understand how how, how nodes work and so on. Yeah. Like um, a, a classic one is people allocating spell damage and expecting that their minions get stronger. Um, oh, interesting. Uh, Okay. That's like a real classic, uh, yeah. classic type of issue. Um, so yeah, things like that. Yeah. Just because the minion, the minion does say spell on it because the summoning of the minion is a spell. Right. Um, and so therefore they would expect that, that to, you know, the uh, things like that, you know, uh -huh. so there's, there's stuff like that, that like, you know, just like, and so, so it's nice to, I mean, obviously we should fix that too, but, uh, but the, um, the, the things like that are just nice to, um, to, to clean up. So yeah, that was a really nice feature. And I, I really want to get that for items as well. So you can see the comparison of DPS, um, when you equip an item, what the, what the DPS change in your skills will be. Ooh, interesting. Um, so things like that will be, will be nice too. Yeah, that's great. Do you, do you plan to only have this on like the small passive nodes or on keystones too? Like, oh, no, what's just on anything? Yeah, just on, on anything. anything. You can just see what exactly. It, it should work right now. Like, if you mouse over a keystone in that oh. demo, um, not that we not that we wanted people to be just exploring the whole passive tree because you know yeah yeah didn't do that yet, but <laughs> but uh, you know if you do, were to do that, it should um, it should show you the exact result of allocating that thing even for a keystone, and it should work because I mean it goes through the whole damage pipeline. Um, uh, which, I mean, by the way, we're, we're really trying to do some improvements so that we can improve um, how mm -hmm. uh, DPS is displayed. Uh, like th there's a lot of work that we still need to do on improving um, the character screen um, uh, DPS values and so on. And like just yeah. all the stuff that that shows you. Um, it, there's still a bit of a train wreck right now where like a lot of the skills haven't had a lot of attention as far as like um, what stats they should show, like what stuff is actually currently relevant and all that okay. stuff. Um, but effectively, um, this screen shows you the result of the differences to what the skill screen stat changes would be. Okay. So whatever okay. would sh whatever would show up in the skill uh, panel for the for the skill, um, that is what will show up. The differences to that on each skill will show up here. Yeah. Um, and uh, there's even I don't know if you you wouldn't you probably wouldn't have seen this because I, I'm not even sure if it's actually in the build that you saw, yeah. but um, there's actually. Uh, it gets more complicated because if you hold down, I don't know if you saw this, but if you hold down alt, you can um, lock a uh, hover in place. Oh. And once you've locked a hover in place, you can then mouse onto it and then start uh, uh, clicking on things. And, and, and there, there are actually oh. underlined terms that you can see to explore more about it. But actually that, uh, that. thing, the, that DPS thing you saw there, you can actually um, click open each skill and see more details about exactly what changes about the skill um, based on a passive node. And um, really? there's even tabs for um, the different uh, um, uh, weapon sets and other okay. stuff like that so you can actually go real deep in that thing if you um heck yeah you, let's you know go about it. But, uh, yeah we'll, we'll see what we, we get there but we're going to be showing more about that stuff um later on but uh, yeah exciting. there's uh, quite a bit there um, it's very there. exciting so full transparency i don't know how many people are watching but i might be mobbed i started using path of building yesterday i've right. been playing PO <laughs> poe for five years right, now right, right. first time right, i opened right. it yesterday Oh, Jonathan, if you can get all this stuff in game, I will be it's so not gonna appreciative, be like man. Building. It's, it's not going to be like Father Building. No, but and like one... some of the features, like going, being yeah, able yeah, to yeah. see the difference I mean, like, it'll make on my character. You know? well, the, one thing that we, the one thing we don't want to do in game ever, so this is the core rule, is I never want to allow you to see what the result of an item you don't have would be. Yeah. That's, you know what I mean? So like yeah, effectively, yeah. like I'm fine with showing you information when you have the item, you can compare it, you can understand that replication of that item. Yeah. But when we're showing you stuff about items you don't have, like like as in you can just make up an item rare that you never actually yes. found, and then just yep. see what the implication of that. Are, that's where I think it goes too far, and that's where third party tools I think need to take over. Right. 
Um, mm -hmm. But as far as showing information for items you have and what they would do and um, as much, all of that sort of stuff, I think that we can um, show. I would like to show as much information as we can show for that. Yeah, I think that's fine for a lot of players like like me. That'd be right. perfectly fine. And I, sure, sure. I blast, I blast my fair share. So I, I would absolutely yeah. love that and be able to make a build out of that. Right. It's not going to be like a, what was it in Diablo Two, hero editor or something, where you ah. could like make whatever. Oh, sure. you want. I remember playing oh, sure, a little sure. bit for the single player saves. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not happening, not happening. Mm -hmm. uh, well, that's really cool to see. And with like Eben doing the voiceover for the skills and everything, if something was done on like the skill tree too, I think a lot of people would just understand actually, it far more you know i'm actually pretty keen to do keystones uh with videos as well because i think those do deserve a, a little bit of extra seriously extra, yeah 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 I think oh so. my I think god keystones do deserve a little video tutorial for, for each one i think that i think they're, they're significant enough that, that, that we should do that i agree i agree yeah. uh on that too um one one other thing that i don't think is represented fairly enough currently in pwe one are mm -hmm. the ascendancy classes on like character select is that something you guys right. are considering adding onto PW2's character select screen for so the different classes? The, the, the concern there is that you would get too much information oh, um, right when you're trying to pick a character. Now, what we do have, and, and this was actually, um, the UX for this was actually not good enough, so people, a lot of people missed it. But on the character screen right now, there are three icons below each yep. class. And if you mouse over those, you get a video about what, and, and yes. a little text description about what the strengths of the character class are. Yep. Um, so those things there um, are kind of intended to like help you a little bit of understanding the the, um, the the sort of archetype that you're kind of picking when you pick a class. Right. Um, we have definitely had requests for showing what the ascendancies are as well. And I think that that's interesting. Um, it's just the question of like, do we actually want to, sh I mean, like, so on one extreme end, it's like, well, here's the skill tree for each ascendancy class. You know what I mean? Like, but the question is, is that, uh, actually reasonable to show someone trying to pick their class? Like, I don't want people to think that like, oh, to pick a class, you have to literally understand like all of the implications of all of these right. skill tree right. things here, you know? Mm -hmm. Now, on the other hand, just saying the names of the ascendancies or like showing, you know, like, like, for example, we discussed like, okay, evolves into, and then you've got like three icons of, with, with, with like images with like three names. And I think that kind of gives you a bit of flavor yeah. um, about what it might be. So that's the kind of example of what you could do. Okay. Um, but I re I worry about showing like you know oh yeah here's the full like ascendancy uh like di like uh, tree for each class because I just think that that could turn into a a thing where like, yeah like like that you would have to know that to be able to pick a class. I, yeah. I guess some people would argue you do have to know that, but I guess then to me that's where the guides and and videos and, and right. stuff like that people make come in rather than the game trying to tell like you know trying to give you all that information right there on the character selection. Yeah. Uh, select feels a bit much. Yeah, it could lead um, to like decision paralysis or something exactly, like that exactly. for new so players especially. So my, my hope is to kind of give you the broad outline of like, this is what mm -hmm. the class is about. Yeah. Um, so like, for example, I think the warrior, it's like, um, I think it's got um, like uh, big hard hits or something like that. And then like stunning is like the other one. And um, then uh, uh, big defenses being like, you know, shield and um, and like high armor being the mm -hmm. last one. So those are kind of the, the strengths of the class um, that we that we present. It's like, right. this is what this class is about. Yeah. Um, uh, whereas the ranger, I think it was like agility, range, like, you know, ranged attacking. And um, what was the last one? Uh, I don't remember what the Nature, last one was. poison. Now. I don't know. There's a lot of poison. No, it wasn't. No. That, it isn't really supposed to be about like what like elements you're doing or anything. It's oh, more okay. like the overall play style, you know? So it's like yeah. you've got high mobility, you're right. fighting from range. And then um, what was the last one? I'm gonna have to go check again. I can't yeah. remember now. What I didn't said, play the but... ranger. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. Like so, basically, just but just the overall. Like, here are the features of what this class yes. is about, and with a video to sort of show to demonstrate what kind of thing you can expect there. But um, yeah. that's great. That'll help a lot. It'll keep people in the game. Mm -hmm. I, I keep stressing that it's so good for keeping sure. new players involved. And you know, one yeah. of the big pluses to keeping the ascendancies off, I'd say, is you know, a new player. Uh, for me, for example, when I went into the game, I knew nothing about PUE. I was coming from a different <laughs> game. I was just searching for games like it. I opened the passive tree for the first time. Big first. Wow. Crazy moment. Yeah, yeah. My next big moment was when I figured out, oh my gosh, I get to like choose a prestige class. That's so right, cool right. as well. It's, it was yeah, a really yeah. cool surprise. So right, right, I can right. see that, especially if it's a little bit more streamlined in PUE2. That too, is true. You know, true. It, it's, a, it's a cool moment and it's memorable yeah. for new players. Yeah. So it can really yeah. hook them into the fantasy and be like, right, oh my right. gosh. Those other eleven classes also have ascendancies right, right, too, right. probably. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I get the argument for both sides there. Mm -hmm. Very curious. Um, okay, I've got a little bit of an end game question for you, but it sure. may uh, may have been uh, solved a bit with the, the latest Necropolis news with uh, sextants right. going away and everything. So we know mm -hmm. Pee Wee's two end game is going to revolve around maps, and you guys like the way maps work. I'm curious, are there any substantive design differences in maps in PeeWee 2 v PeeWee 1? Like, is there something that 
you don't think really would work in PV2 or, you know, even in PV1 doesn't work, but you want to get rid of it. I would say like sextants was one of those things and you just got rid right. of it. So I'm curious in PV2, have you found anything else out about that? I mean, there it's definitely, there's definitely a lot of differences to the overall experience. I mean, maps, maps are still maps, but there is still a yeah. lot of stuff around it. But I guess I don't want to talk too much about like the overall, um, okay. the, the overall thing there yet. Um, okay. There'll be like a big end game announcement at some point where we talk okay. a lot about that. Okay. Um, but I guess the main thing that we're like, that's important to us is that players really like to be able to um, configure what content or like find, like to be able to play the type of content that they want. Okay. Um, so that's a very important element to keep. Um, and so that is like one thing that we do definitely to make sure that our end game is satisfying, um, right. no matter what form it takes, is that you can still have the ability to play the content you want to play so that you can get the type of rewards you want to get and, you know, all the stuff around that. So that's okay. kind of the main, uh, the, the main design goal, I would guess, about what, what, what the, all the changes that we are making. Okay. Uh, one awesome. of the topics you addressed on the PV2 subreddit a while back was the fact that all the bosses in the campaign are going to, or some of the bosses will give special rewards, you know, like plus 10% mm -hmm. sure. cold resistance, so on and so forth. Some people were saying, oh, well, then on my new character, I'll have to hunt down all those optional bosses and I want to get to maps, right. get to end game. Uh, you said yeah, we, we would consider maybe allowing us to kill that same boss in Endgame and get yeah, that yeah, reward. Yeah. Is that something you yep. have explored? Further? I mean, I still I I haven't talked to, to more about that with anyone okay. internally, but I still believe that that's the right the right move. Okay, um, like I think people will like yeah. that, so I'm pretty yeah. sure we will do that. Oh, cool. Yeah. Uh, and on that note too, you were you were very active in the PoE2 subreddit for, yes. for a while there. So I'm curious. Yeah. And you know, that... I'll tell you what happened with that. So effectively, like oh, that, I, I was, I was really active around um, the holidays. <laughs> <laughs> so it was the Christmas holidays and I had time and I was like, Oh, I can just go on Reddit and uh, chat to people. Yeah. And then we got into the crazy crunch session for um, getting the, uh, the thing that we, we, we you know, the, the, this deadline that we had. Yeah. And um, then honestly, it just got to the point where I just, where I have time again. So I'm hoping I will be able to get back and, and, and get back on Reddit again and start answering questions again. Cause that was fun to do. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it just got to the point where it was like, um, you know, I'm the, yeah, the, as I said, the, the crunch was crazy on, um, yeah. on, uh, on, on that last deadline. And, uh, yeah, now that there's been the delay and, you know, we've got this mm -hmm. deadline out of the way, we right. can like, you know, spread a few things out a little bit more and like get, you know, okay. I yeah. should be able to get more time again to, um, be able to, you know, to get back on and answer more community questions. Cause as I said, I do enjoy doing it. Yeah. Um, it's just a question of, uh, getting, getting, getting the time uh, to do it unfortunately right that that was my understanding of what happened mm -hmm. I, there was some crazy mm -hmm. crunch going on there um people mm -hmm. really did enjoy it i mean I, yeah, i've read sure. thousands and I, I really should do it again yeah i've read thousands of comments of people being like man i really right. love talking to them i love hearing right, the right, insights right. i mean obviously sure. these interviews people love hearing you talk about the game you're passionate you're right. knowledgeable it's just great so yeah would love to see you back <laughs> on there uh really good stuff um so uh, another question that I had for you. So we know like a lot about PV2 at this point. I mean, there are some stuff that we haven't been fully revealed on, you know, like the ascendancies and end game right. and everything. Um, but we know they're coming. Is there mm -hmm. anything that you as the game director of PV2 uh, are intentionally saving up for the launch of PV2 to the great PV2 to the great community for them to just discover and like find out for themselves and be like, oh my gosh, look at this wild thing that they, you know, kept under wraps or, or I'm, alternatively, is there something that you are just super excited for players to get their hands on? I'm so I think the uniques are going to be where people really, oh, yeah. like we haven't really been talking about that. That's right. And um, like, I'm hoping to do some pretty cool shit with uniques. Oh, um, hell yeah. And uh, so, uh, you know, like that, those are something that we haven't been spoiling. I kind of want to try not spoiling them. Cool. Um, because I think that um, it's, it's fun to just find stuff and be like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, you know, like this is the, like, what the hell does this do? You know, like, how do they make that? This kind of stuff. So I, uh, I'm hoping uniques will be where we get like a lot of that, like, you know, craziness. But then of course there's just bosses and stuff, you know, we're not going to show every boss. Right. Um, so uh, there's just lots yeah. of bosses. But then ultimately though, the other thing as well is that in, in, on the, on the uniques is that like it is really the common combining of uniques and so on that really you know like it's like uh, th there's this feeling i guess of like when you've got a new game and like no one knows what's in it yet and people exactly. haven't like optimized it to the nth degree and like everyone's just able to just go in there like like no one knows no one can tell you what the meta build is no yes. one can tell you like what yeah. the you know like what, what 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 the best thing to do is and like it's just a matter of discovery like there's this kind of like golden period of a game when it first comes out that you kind of get there and honestly, like that is so exciting to me is just that feeling of like discovery and like all of that, that just that, that moment. 
Um, and of course, anyone can technically get that um, by just not reading guides. Right. Or someone just playing the game. But at the same time, like when there's just, there are no guides, everyone's just the, 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 everyone is as much of a noob as you are. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> uh, everyone can just go in and, uh, and and try stuff and find uniques and like, oh wow, I found this one, and that has all these implications. Like there's just an awesome period there. So I wouldn't want to spoil things to the point where everyone felt like they already knew what the game was before the point when it actually came out. So awesome. I'm really hoping there'll be a special time yeah. uh, when the beta comes out when everyone can play like through the game there's all these uniques that they've never seen before and yeah. all that stuff like that I th i'm hoping that that's going to be a really golden period of like just a lot of fun uh and uh that's that's what i'm really looking forward to that moment and i'm looking to be like forward to being there as well yeah. and just being in chat and just like playing the game with everyone and you know Heck all that yeah. stuff like that. So that's really fun um and i remember like i just remember how awesome that was when we first did it back when poe uh, one came out you know yeah it's yeah uh, i, I want i want to feel that again Oh, well, that's beautiful. Uh, it's It's been a while since, uh, you know, the PoE 1 launch. Are you are you a little nervous about, you know, when PoE 2 does come out, whether it's, you know, the end of the year or whatever? Like, are are you a little bit scared that there, it might just be so many people coming to play? Because I, people are excited about this game. Like, none other, like, in the genre that I've well, seen. People are hungry. I am hoping, I am hoping at least from a technical perspective that everything goes okay. We've yeah. been doing like, you know, we've got a, like load testing stuff that we've been working on and all that sort of stuff like that to make sure that we're okay from that perspective. So I'm hoping yeah. at least from a technical perspective, the launch will go well. Yeah. Of course, what you can never be sure of is, yep. um, you know, like do people just find some immediate exploit that just trivializes everything? Like uh, what, you know, what's going to go on there? Like all that kind of concern is a definitely big concern. But also the other thing as well is just like, you know, um, like making sure that the game feel is there no matter you know because i mean you, you saw you know when we had that test we just did that certain people fell into various holes and they weren't enjoying themselves and when that happens that's definitely a failure that we need to make sure does not happen when it comes to beta launch like mm -hmm. you know we have to make sure that um if, no matter what class you pick no matter what skills you pick right. you're going to have at least some kind of a reasonable experience um, yeah. and that's going to be enjoyable for you um so uh you know i mean i guess on the other hand though there has to be mistakes you can make or else there's making good choices isn't a thing right is either so, you know there has to be that uh, to go on but um yeah we just need to make sure that um the very least no matter what class you pick you know ascendancies there's good builds for all of them like making sure that there's everything um mm -hmm. you know that, that's going to be fun and that the overall experience is just good um so mm -hmm. uh yeah we'll um ideally be able to refine that get that better um you know get uh more people um such as yourself to play the game and to try it out again after we've made changes see that would know, love to are, <laughs> experience again um you know like uh want you know like i, I just want to make sure that everyone's just having a good time at the end of the day because i mean at the end of the day that's what we want right we just want yeah. everyone to have a fun time yeah so um you know uh you we we can talk about philosophy all we would like but at the end of the day the players have to be having a fun experience exactly um, and so yeah. uh that is ultimately the goal and mm -hmm. uh, so that's what we should be striving for and um i really hope that we can actually get to that point yeah oh well awesome uh bad choices man so that's something that happens all the time in poe one you have a tons of room sure. to make bad yeah. choices and errors is that still going to be present in poe2 with the passive tree with you right, know, right. keystones so... items or is that removed that is that is a tricky question, right? So um, yeah. the, the the term internally for this is the noob trap. Like, is uh, the skill is the skill a noob trap, right? Like it. something that someone allocates and then they fell into a hole and now they're just worse than other people. Yeah. And yeah, it's tricky because you do need to have the ability to make mistakes, or else you or else what's the point? Like, if your choices don't matter, then that also sucks, right? You have to feel like I made a good choice here, and now I because of that I result in higher damage, higher like clear speed, higher other stuff, right? So there has to be bad choices. But at the same time, if people fall into too many catastrophic holes, uh, then that means they're just going to have a bad experience. And so then the question is, how much variance do you need to have between the best player and the worst player? And we've talked a little bit about that before, and yeah. that, that needs to be quite high. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like, um, I think this is still an open question on some, to some degree. Like, um, look, we actually discuss this all the time. And like, honestly, for every, like, even just for all the skill tree friends, like, okay, so is, for example, right now in the build that you were playing, it is probably worse um, to allocate um, uh, the defensive node as the as your first choice, right? Like yeah. as your first choice, if you pick the defensive node as opposed to the offensive node, you're probably going to have a worse time. Yeah. If you pick the offensive node, it's going to reduce the number of hits you need to do um, on default attack um, down by by one because we've engineered this to be exactly the case. Like we've got the life tweaked exactly so that the extra ten percent of damage is going to make it so you kill a monster with one hit fewer, so your clear speed increases, right? Because right? okay. you want the allocating that offensive node to increase your clear speed, so that means one fewer hit, which means that like you sort of you engineer it to get to that point. If yeah. you allocate the defensive node, yeah, you're a bit more defensive, but overall your experience is not really going to change very much. 
And there's not really a good amount of like armor percent we could add that makes sense as a node there that's going to make that um, better. Now that node matters in the long term, um, but in the short term, um, it doesn't really matter that much. It does something, but it doesn't do very much. And so the question is, is it okay to have that choice be like that? To have like the, you, the offense is really the right choice? And it probably isn't. But then also, what's the alternative? Yeah. Um, like it's very hard to design something like that. And so even just that basic question of what is the very first pick of nodes in the passive tree from one player to the other is like a long multi-hour discussion that's still, yeah. you know, we've had multi-hour discussions just about that. Yeah. And there's still more multi-hour discussions to even have about that. Because like, for example, and I'm just going to get into the weeds here. Like one thing we could do that we discussed is we could add flat armor there, right? And flat armor is an interesting choice because what it means is that um, you can make the, flat armor can give you a situation where you get good extra defense at the start. Mm -hmm. But by the time you get to um, end game, um, uh, that flat armor isn't adding much comparative to what it right. would be. Because in order to make it so that um, that choice would actually be meaningful at low levels, it would have to be like a plus 30% armor node or something. Mm -hmm. We can't really have the first node there be plus 30% armor because then at end game it would be like totally mandatory. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, therefore a flat armor node is kind of like a way you could go. But then there's like the theme question of, okay, if you add flat, like, okay, how does it make sense for, to have like a node that's plus flat armor on a tree? Like what exactly happened to your character for that to be right? <laughs> like percent armor? You can have like this idea that like, oh, I got better at wearing armor. Yeah, like my yeah. knowledge and skill have increased such that I'm better at wearing this. So therefore mm -hmm. my armor is improved. But if it's like flat armor, you're like, okay, what did my skin get harder? Like what happened here? You know? So um, like uh, this kind of thing, uh, it, like keeps us up at night. Um, yeah. And, <laughs> you know, it's like a whole uh, question. And as I said, it's even just that first, like, you know, what is the first choice on the, on, on, on the warrior um, is, is, is a hard enough question. So yeah, I, don't, I don't know where I was really going with that. Uh, I can't remember what the question even was at this point. But <laughs> either way, that was a, uh, that was a, uh, just, a, just a random rant about the difficulty of, um, of, 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 of I mean, that's right. We're talking about the choices and can, choices. can there be bad ones? Will so players on. be punished? Exactly you know, like, right. So yeah. is it, so yeah, then we come back to it. Is it okay for there to be that, for that first choice to be a choice that has a good and a bad option? Um, I think most people would say the first choice should probably be n no. But then on the other hand, like, what is it then? Like, what can that choice otherwise be? Yeah, you um, want to give uh, a choice, yeah. you know? Right, right. right. You don't and, want to start the, the game off with like, oh, yeah, you have one direction yes, and, you can and, go. And the choice between offensive and defensive is a good one, right? Like if I am feeling like, because the reason I like that is because it's like, if I'm feeling like I'm dying too often, you want to have immediately the ability to fix that problem. And if, I am, uh, if, I, if I'm feeling like I'm not doing enough damage, you want to have the ability to fix that problem immediately. So you want right from the get-go to have offense versus defense as your options, which is why we do it. Do it. Mm -hmm. um, but yet even then the decision of how to do that becomes difficult. So, um, you know, yeah, like that's a, that's a tricky one. Um, and yeah, it's like this all over the passive tree like all all over there's the question of should like a node should probably not exist if it wouldn't be good for at least somebody otherwise right there's just a noob trap right it literally yeah. is just worst to pick like you should like we should never have a node where it's like a bad option for, for anybody to pick but then there's the question of uh should we have nodes for which the use cases of that nodes are so niche that um only the like the tiniest minority few would ever um actually reasonably pick them because you could argue that that's kind of bad too but then on the other other hand like that's part of what makes the tree interesting that there are nodes there right. that uh that, that that only a few people would want to pick and then that's like the fact that they exist is like adding to builds that otherwise might not be able to yeah. exist yeah exactly um, so yeah i don't know like it's a it's a huge um it's a it's a huge complicated web right. of considerations for each of those things um and uh you know and 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 um then the, the the overriding then thing at the end of this is just that we need to make sure that the variance at least at low levels is not as high as it is right now so that there's less bad choices okay. to make at low levels right um but that you still can have bad builds because otherwise you can't have good builds yeah um so mm -hmm. yeah that's the end i guess that's the whole rant but uh that's the end result of all of that no man that's sensible and i fell into the noob trap when I was the warrior, I went for defenses because right. I, I looked down the tree and I was like, oh, I can get yep. life regeneration yep. if I go down this. Yes, and, no, I... no, the and you know what? The life regen nodes actually are very good. And that's the main reason, honestly, to allocate the uh, the, the armor there is to get the life regen. What I did. Um, so that is actually a good thing to allocate. Yeah. Um, but the um, but yeah, still, that that you've got a couple of nodes there that are kind of effectively dead on arrival at right. the start. I mean, they do work. It's just that really yeah. they're more useful as you get to higher levels and low levels because exactly. you don't have very much armor at the start. Yeah. Because, um, uh, you know, like, especially at the very beginning, you might not even have uh, uh armor items might not have even dropped you might have like energy shield and evasion items mm -hmm. um and so then right away um you know you've got a problem there and yeah it's a, it's a whole thing anyway yeah flat armor would be technically better there it would actually make more difference it would actually work um but we're having theme 
justification problems uh, with that. Um, ah. immediately there, so, yeah. Now, on the flat armor question, I, I was talking to a mm -hmm. few people about the warrior mm -hmm. and my mm -hmm. my experience dying to monster packs on the yeah, warrior, yeah. you know, when I'm doing like rolling mm -hmm. slam or something. And, you know, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, of course, could have controlled myself better, but I'm curious. Oh. Uh, right now, it's like when you go into your first big pack of werewolves, for example, in the old forest, yeah. man, if you don't pull only a few and you pull maybe six or right. seven, oh, you're you're basically dead on the first slam. So I was wondering, so, like, it would do you guys feel like that's OK or maybe you should defenses kind of be built into the warrior since we're going in melee, um, you know, maybe like a flat slam, defense. So it's good at low rolling level. slam. Rolling slam in particular is designed to be the skill that requires commitment to use. Like as okay. in, if you use that and you're in the wrong situation, then you are in for a bad time. Um, so that skill there is like is exactly that skill. So the intention is that there are other skills you can use when you're, um, uh, you know, when you're in a situation like that. Like when you're in that situation, don't use rolling slam. Like if you want to use rolling slam, what you want to do is you want to, um, uh, you can use shield charge to like stun them, and then you can kind of get back a bit, and then get in, uh, like while 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 they're stunned, and then so rolling slam forward. Because yeah. once you get that, if you can get that first hit on, that first hit of rolling slam um, also does more stun damage which can kind of protect you a little bit and then the second slam does more that does more um overall damage and more aoe so that skill really in particular is kind of designed for that high commitment like you know if right. you're going to use this don't be surrounded um whereas other skills are kind of like the the ones that you'd be wanting to use in other situations so uh, i'm i'm hearing yeah. skill issue from john from you <laughs> <laughs> well that is a good thing. but then the, the, I, guess, I guess the thing is is that like is it once again is is it so rolling slam is literally the first skill you get yeah. Is it acceptable to have that kind of skill requirement on the first skill? I mean, I like, I sort of want the answer to be yes. Yeah. Um, but it is a, make, a question of making sure that people understand that. And right. um, one thing I should mention, by the way, is that Rolling Slam does have a video that explains this. But because of the fact that you don't get it from a um, uh, from the uh, uh, from from the uncut gem, yep. most players are not going to get the opportunity to watch the video. There's technically a way to access it if you hold down Alt and then mouse over the skill icon, uh, uh, like mouse under the hover. There's okay. like a little YouTube like play button thing in there that you can <laughs> click on and watch the video straight from in there. Yeah. But it's not obvious enough to people that that can happen. Right. And so okay. um, that's like a question of making sure that people actually see that. Um, because yeah, it does say on that skill um, that uh, you know you, that yeah, to be careful when using it and stuff like that. So like, that's the kind of thing that um, you know can can help. But uh, definitely, anyway, that's just... no, I, I think it 100 percent would have because and and like I said, it was it was like a driving problem too. Using WASD for the first time with like you know in a Path yeah. of Exile game. Oh yeah, true. Too. That can take a little bit to get used to as well. Of course. Oh yeah, because I was I found myself like going in circles with Rolling Slam. I was getting a right. rhythm down by the end of it, but right, it right, took right. a little bit of time. Yeah. So fair enough. Yeah. So I think that's just going to happen um, with new players. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, so I've got just a few more questions for you, Jonathan. Um, so one, I'm curious, uh, for people, especially around the office, who have been playing PoE 1 for so long, uh, when they get their hands on PoE 2 for the first time and like play it, and maybe it was around ExileCon last year, where I'm sure a lot of it was available, like the demos and everything. Yeah, yeah. Are they, are they like shocked or just like floored at how different is like the feel and everything and the way you're moving your character and comboing the skills what's the reaction around your offices with this i, th I think it took a um it, it was interesting um it was really around um the last exile con where people okay i think some people had not realized the difference in the games until that point yeah. um so that was definitely a thing but even also with this current demo because so the nice thing about the current demo is that because it's um uh, level a level one like you know demo you can just play from the start there's a lot more players actually who even like um who like pe people don't take a game as seriously when you just get given a character you know and yeah. so um i think that there's a lot of people in the office who are, who are playing it a lot um you know like even talking like, like artists and stuff right um who uh you know who who, who have not really been playing it that often until mm -hmm. recently and now they're starting to play it now that you've got a level one demo there and yes they are quite surprised by how different that it feels um, so yeah, for, for for certain, but I mean, at some point, I think, um, I, I remember specifically after ExileCon, the, the, one of the level designers sort of came and said, you know, I didn't even realize, I, he said, like, I didn't really realize what game we were making before now, you know, yeah. like, 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 cause when they're, even when they're just doing level design, they need to bear in mind, like the overall pace and like, you know, what it sort of feels like and so on. So yeah. it's like, there was like a realization at some point what was kind of going on there. And I think that that's kind of important. 
Yeah. Um, it certainly matters a lot for obviously anyone doing design. Um, right. But uh, you know, obviously, you know, if you're just like a, if, you, if you're like a in the rigging team or something like that, it doesn't. You know, it's a little, a little bit of a different situation. <laughs> so they don't tend to play the game as much. But yeah, yeah, more recently they've started. You know, more of the artists have started playing as well. Um, just now they got that level one demo. There's like an alpha server up that's just an, just an internal alpha that they can play. Right. Um, you know, which has got the same build on it that uh, that yeah. you played, minus the progression blocking bugs and the crashes <laughs> that we had at the uh, at that event. Yeah. Um. So yeah, the, the, I think they. Um. You know, and so. Yeah, we had um, you know, one of our animators just walk in this morning, and he was like, "I've been playing the alpha build. It was really fun. It was really awesome. I had oh, a few, yeah. I had, had a great time." Yeah. So um, you know, it's uh, yeah, it's been it's been really good um, awesome. to to have that stuff going on. Awesome. Okay. Well, uh, so we've got an alpha coming in June. We have early access mm -hmm. later in the year. What mm -hmm. can people expect from the new cycle from Pee 2? Is it going to be showcases every like monthly, every few weeks, updates from you guys, or um, is it? going to be a little bit more sparse until we hit the alpha period i need to i honestly like now that i've got this crazy deadline out of the way i need to like go and like because now i've got the like the 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 new um the new date everything like that um i need to go and like reassess our whole like marketing uh like 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 list again yeah. um what i don't want to happen again is the crunch that happened that right. we just had um, mm -hmm. at our studio i really want to avoid that because that was horrible that's good um like uh, a lot of people were just like working way too many hours i really don't want to see that again mm -hmm. um, so we have to avoid that and um one of the things i think one of the key uh, mistakes that we had made um was i'm um, trying to market um stuff uh like while we're making it um yeah. so uh okay. like there was always this issue where of like you know we're, we're like like where there's this marketing deadline we're also trying to make the things for that marketing deadline and Got like it. that is that is bad yeah um so um the that i don't want to do again because i think that adds a lot of unnecessary stress so i think that um the i'm not sure what that exactly will mean for what okay. the um announcement schedule looks like yeah there's a lot of stuff we can announce that doesn't require um that kind of stuff to happen like for example um like we have a lot a lot like a lot of this like for, uh like like usability stuff like all the stuff around like you know the items and so on there's a lot of stuff to talk about there which i've kind of talked a little bit about here like doing like full announcements for all that stuff we could probably do that like relatively soon because mm -hmm. um it doesn't really require the same um like a, a amount of sort of internal work to be able to just exactly make trailers and you know, um, gameplay. yeah exa exactly it's like yeah. all that stuff we can do so um that that'll be easier but um yeah I, I'll, I'll work out a schedule um and we'll get a um another one but there will certainly be um a lot more announcements before the um, early access to do and um, we've obviously got more characters to talk about we've got um you know more times we want people to be able to play the build we've got um oh, cool like obviously stuff to do with in game um we've got stuff to do with <laughs> items we've got stuff to do with um there's some other surprises as well uh that uh we still haven't announced about the game that i think uh people will be hopefully excited for um so stuff that i hope will be just totally out of left field oh um, okay so, uh, we'll just we'll see what goes i mean there's there, there, there's always more yeah uh, like mouse <laughs> oh my gosh that was out of left field i did not see that <laughs> yeah, coming sure. I yeah, thought yeah, it was so a gag at random. first. <laughs> what was that? Sorry? I thought it was a gag at first. Oh yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know, oh, they're gonna do so, a little so did, funny thing. Well, you know? well, well. So did the development team. <laughs> <laughs> you know because like you know i just remember like uh I, I managed to really get someone with that because um i was talking to the ux guy about um uh the uh the 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 the, the um the stun threshold meter mm -hmm. and um uh he was like oh so should should we only draw this when um uh you know when people got, got a shield on i'm like oh but you'll also need it while you're riding a mount <laughs> and he was like what like he just totally, he just totally didn't know because he just didn't know about it oh, that's good. um and uh he just started laughing and he just like laughed for 30 seconds uh about about, about that so uh, serious yeah, yeah I, totally, <laughs> I got him i got him good with that one nice. um but yeah uh but yeah then he he he, he didn't even realize i was serious but yes <laughs> that was good awesome uh, anyway yes yeah, so there's more there's more stuff Great. to announce um and cool. uh most most of i think people like but uh, yeah that should be okay fun. well that's awesome man i have one more question for you before we say goodbye to everybody well I use your face and my thumbnails all the time. Yeah. Are you pro or anti I mean, my you use can, of your you face? Can, you, can, you can do it if you want. I mean, honestly, I don't think I've got the most beautiful face ever. So, uh, you know, oh, like, no, <laughs> dude, people love your face and the beautiful hair. You know, I, I think it's very uh, yeah, I mean, appealing. I, 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 I enjoy talking about the game, but uh, it's, it's honestly, it's fine if you want to do it. It's no problem. But okay. uh, yeah, it's one of those things where, uh, you know, like I always, I, it, honestly, it, every time I go on YouTube and I see my face, I'm like, oh my God, like what's even going on here? Like it's, it's embarrassing, but uh, it's, it's all good. It's all good. Okay. Uh, okay. I, I had to ask, yeah. man. Uh, sure. It was lovely talking to you, dude. Um, I loved meeting you at Exile Meet as well. Thank you for this opportunity. I'm like humbled, honored. I, I love the game. I love you guys. It's it's just been an unreal opportunity. So thank you so much. I hope we get <laughs> to do it in the much. future.
So yeah, okay. absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, thank you man. For the interview. It was a great interview. I really oh, enjoyed thank it. you. Thanks so much. It was my first one. It, it did. I, th- I hope it went well. I, I did not no, look at the chat a single good. time. Really so. well. Really well. Awesome. Yeah, no, okay. Good. All, right, All right. Well, did you have anything else you wanted to say before we head no, out? No, I think I'm, I think we're good. So yeah, okay. thanks very much. And okay. uh, yeah. I'm, All right. Thanks I'm, so much, Jonathan. Talakura. No problem. Later. Bye. <laughs>